two, three, four, five. Check one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Channel one, channel one, channel one. Check one two one two one two three one two three one two three. This is HBU Huskies Men's Basketball on the DNA Husky Sports Network. Huskies Basketball is brought to you by these corporate partners of HBU Athletics, Houston Federal Credit Union, Marriott Houston West Chase, the Memorial Hermann Healthcare System, Raising Canes, Under Armour, Firehouse Subs, Pepsi, Shipley Donuts, Four Points by Sheraton, IBEW Local 716, Jimmy John's, Kalachi Factory, and Holiday Inn Express. The DNA Husky Sports Network is your home all season long for HBU Huskies men's basketball. And right now it's just about game time, so let's head out to the arena. Hello, everybody. Welcome in to the campus of Houston Baptist University in Southwest Houston and Sharp Gym, the home of your HBU Huskies and the side of our final home game of the 2018-2019 campaign here tonight on the Husky Sports Network. Hi, everybody. Welcome into the broadcast. My name is Lonnie King. Glad to have you along for the ride tonight, wherever you are around the city of Houston, across the state of Texas around the country or even around the world on the World Wide Web. We are glad you've made HBU Huskies basketball a part of your midweek activities tonight. Huskies finishing up the home portion of their schedule with this one tonight, and it is senior night here because of that. The final home game for four guys that will be recognized tonight, three of them in uniform, and they will be in the starting lineup tonight. The fourth one is uh, someone who's contributed greatly to this program, but 
unfortunately for him and for us, has already played in his final game. That's Josh Ibarra. But Josh uh, is a senior, will be recognized tonight. And he will join Braxton Bond, Stephen Osuji, and Edward Hart as the seniors who are recognized here before this game tonight. And then the Huskies will take on the Incarnate Word Cardinals. Look to finish up the home portion of their schedule with a win here this evening to help propel them closer to a conference tournament berth. All but decided now. Still a couple of things to go. But if they win tonight, it goes a long way toward clinching a spot in the tournament. And in fact, if a couple of other chips fall the way the Huskies would like for them to fall tonight, the Huskies by the end of the night may have that tournament berth clinched before they even head out on the road to finish out the conference season in Corpus Christi this weekend. We'll talk about that as the night progresses. It'll depend on what's going on in a couple of other locations around the conference tonight. We'll keep you up to date on the conference scoreboard as we go as well. But we've got this one coming up straight ahead. And as you've heard Coach Cottle say all season long, the Huskies just need to worry about taking care of their own business. So we'll talk a little bit about that in a little while with the head coach. We'll also visit with assistant coach Judd Kenny as we take a look at the opponent, the Incarnate Word Cardinals. And that will lead us right up to tonight's opening tip and then all the play-by-play. -play. We've got all the action for you coming up straight ahead. Senior night here against the Incarnate Word Cardinals on the Husky Sports Network. Houston Federal Credit Union and Houston Baptist University have joined forces to put the howl back in your finances. HFCU offers several products and services such as auto loans, mortgages, and credit cards. And HFCU has a financial education program, Elevate, which is tailored to helping you increase your financial knowledge. Stop by any of our convenient locations or visit our website, www.houstonfcu.org, and experience the credit union difference today. Dogs up. Your heart sounds good, Daddy. Regular checkups are good for many things. No tumors. Uh-oh. Your colon sounds funny. But they can't detect everything. At the Memorial Hermann Wellness Institute, get a full body scan, heart scan, or virtual colonoscopy to help you find problems early enough to do something about them. I'm glad you're okay, Daddy. Schedule your scan today. Call 713-222-CARE. Memorial Hermann for your whole life. But what about you? When you text that really cute guy you met at a party on Friday, and he immediately texts you back, you celebrate with an ice-cold Pepsi. Sounds good, doesn't it? But why stop there? The refreshing taste of Pepsi is the perfect way to celebrate anything. Like when you and your roommate order a pizza and the delivery guy throws an extra breadsticks no charge. That's worth a Pepsi celebration. Break out the Pepsi. You're listening to the Husky Sports Network, powered by DNA Studios. Back on the Huskies free game show, and this is our Eye on the Opponent segment where we take a look at the Huskies opponent. Tonight it's the Incarnate Word Cardinals, and we're visiting with Judd Kinney, assistant coach for the Huskies. And Judd, as much as I want to look at the Cardinals tonight, I want to talk about this last week of the conference season for you guys because I know your mantra has kind of been this year, if we take care of our business, it really doesn't matter what the opponent does. And that's really evident coming up in these last two games this week. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's, you know, it's been one of those things all year where you know, we've been in so many close games that we didn't take care of our business, and that's why we, you know, our record might not be where we want it to be. But going into this last week, we're, we're really in a situation where we do what we need to do, and we're in the conference tournament. And it doesn't matter what anybody else does. We, we control our own destiny. That's a great feeling. It's a situation that not a lot of teams have, especially with so much you know, uncertainty still left in these last two games in the conference. I think five or six teams still fighting for those last three spots to get in, and even teams two through five are fighting for seeding still. And so it's a really interesting week of games, and, you know, we're in a good situation that we win and we're in, and we can take care of business, and we dictate our, our fate and our future. And even, you know, there's a couple of scenarios where if you take care of business tonight and a couple of other chips fall the way they could, you could be in for sure by tonight, and Saturday's game would be for seeding or something like that. Um, so it makes it important to take care of business at home tonight. 
Yeah, it'd be good to get a nice, nice sleep, uh, not have to worry so much. But you're absolutely right. Um, the way it's broken down with a little bit of help, and if we do what we're supposed to do and, and win this game, then, yeah, we're in and, and it's up to seeding. But, you know, we're playing a team tonight that's that's dangerous. They, they You know, I, I hate to say they have nothing to play for because they have pride and they have talent and they have a lot to play for. But they're a team that's really dangerous. They can make shots. They're young. They, they don't know any better. It's where we've been in the past where you just go out and play hard and you go out and have fun. And those are dangerous teams when they start playing well. Yeah, they've lost, uh, I think, 14 games in a row in conference now. But they, for the most part, have been close games, games that some, like last uh, weekend's game, that they lost late, lost in overtime to their opponent. Uh, they are a very good free-throw shooting team, pretty good from the field as far as percentages go. That seems to help keep them in a lot of their games. Yeah, they're the top free throw shooting team in the country. That's something that uh, Dr. Cunningham has, has had with other schools that he's been a part of, and he does a good job of whatever his magic trick is. I, you know, I don't know if he's got a wand or some some pixie dust, but he sprinkles it on the team, and they work hard and they make their free throws. And so, you know, that's kept him in games. They don't beat themselves from that respect. Um, you know, they, they don't turn the ball over an extremely high number. You know, they play at a pace that fits them. They play at a style that fits them. And as we saw when we were there, we had a battle battle back and end up winning a really tight back and forth game. That was tie ball game two minutes ago. We end up winning by. Four four made some shots down the stretch but they're not going to go away Corpus Christi saw it they led Corpus most of that game this past weekend before losing in overtime and it, it took a superhuman effort by Jay Sean Talton to win that game for him and so yeah, I, I think these are guys that they're, they're still learn, learning they're still trying to get better and even though they might not have a postseason to play for they have the next three years to play for in a lot of cases with their freshmen so they're just trying to continue to get better every game and unfortunately for us they continue to do that so it's going to be a tough one and I think one of the other things at least from my vantage point that we saw the first time we played them over there was the fact that, yeah, they like to play at a different pace than we do, but they're not afraid to play at our pace because they were right there score for score. Yeah, I mean, they put up 92 points on us, I think 50-something the first half, I remember right. Uh, they can score, no question about it. They, you know, they Because of their lack of depth that they've had because of injuries and things like that, they've played slower. But talent-wise, they can absolutely play fast. They can absolutely push the pace. They can knock down shots. they got guys who can score at all three levels. They're really good off the drive and kick, knocking down open threes. And so even though they might not want to score the 80s like we do, they're very capable, as we've seen in against Corpus, then against us the last game. They can absolutely put up points. And you alluded to it a minute ago, but when a team is basically reduced to the spoiler role for the rest of their season, that makes them doubly dangerous. Yeah, we've been in that role. We were in that role last year, late in the year, when you know after we'd lost down the conference tournament opportunity. So, especially so young, they don't have the old guys who look at it as their careers over. These are a bunch of freshmen and sophomores who are looking at their future and not looking at their past and what's done, but more so what's kind of beginning. And I think that makes them really dangerous, especially because they're, they're you know they're they're having fun. They're learning. Dr. Cunningham's got a great track record of his teams continuing to get better, and their staff does a great job. So they're not going to come out here and just roll over and say, okay, well, you guys have it. You, you're fighting for something we're not. They're going to come out here with that, hey, we can knock these guys out of the tournament. We can make it really difficult on them to get in. And that's a fun role to be in if you can't be playing for a conference tournament. To be the spoiler is a pretty good time. That being said, what's the mood of the team coming into this one tonight? It's been really positive. You know, we, we understand that we, we have – our fate in our hands. Um, the outlook has, has been bright with these guys. They've really approached the last couple of days of practice. It seems with a great mentality. We, I think we've done a good job in Coach Key and Coach Cottrell and Coach Brower putting in the scout report. But this isn't a team we can overlook. So the focus has been there, understanding how talented this team is that we're going to play tonight. And at the same time, the, the excitement of fighting for something still at this point in the season where last year we weren't, this group, especially these sophomores and some of these juniors, we're fighting for something, and, and that's fun. Anytime you're still in the game at this point when there's some teams whose seasons are already over, uh, it, it's, it's a great opportunity. So the approach has been really positive. Their attitude has been really good, and I, I've loved how we've approached the last few days of practice. Good luck tonight. Thank you. Judd Kinney, assistant coach for the Huskies. We're going to take a timeout and then come back with more on the Huskies free game show after this. Run with UA Map My Run. With your UA Connected footwear, you can leave your phone behind. However, if you choose to run with it, the UA Map My Run app will give map views of your route and a deeper look at your workout with additional stats. We are under armor. The future is ours. Under armor. 
I'm Robin. And I'm Chris. We're the brothers behind Firehouse Subs. Back when we were firemen, when it came to food, we said it better be something good and a lot of it. That's what you get at Firehouse Subs. Take our hook and ladder sub. Smoked turkey breast, Virginia honey ham, and Monterey Jack cheese, all steam heated and piled high on a toasted sub roll. Our way beats their way. If you don't agree, it's free. You're going to cover that, right? My money's on the sub. Love the confidence. <laughs> Firehouse Sub, founded by firemen. Building Houston to compete on the world stage is what we do at the IBEW. It's important to us that Houston knows why we do what we do, not just what we do. Sure, we're the best electricians. We train 10,000 hours to be the best. But we get up early so Houston is built to compete. To be the best, hire the best. Skilled labor isn't cheap, and cheap labor just isn't all that skilled. The time is now to hire IBEW electricians. Four points by Sheraton. Always a great stay. Everything you need. Plus extras you love. All for a great rate. Over 150 hotels around the world. Travel the way you like. Check us out at fourpoints.com. Hi, this is Ron Cottrell, head coach of the HBU Huskies. Thanks for listening to Huskies Basketball on the DNA Husky Sports Network. Back on the Huskies free game report, it's time to check in with the head coach of the Huskies, Ron Cottrell, before the final home game tonight at Sharp Gym this year. Uh, game against the Incarnate Word Cardinals and Coach Senior Night. Uh, and a night where you obviously still have something to play for. You're fighting for a tournament berth and can uh, really uh, do yourself a favor taking care of business tonight and kind of look forward to sorting out the seating um, uh, over the weekend. But uh, senior night, the final home game, the resiliency of this team to, to get to this point, what does it mean to you as you look ahead to the week? Well, certainly it's been a season that, that guys have, have really grown and, and grown as a team and grown individually as well. And and we've had our, our ups and downs and, and some unbelievable bright spots and, and some moments we've had to, to kind of fight through. And and uh, any team goes through those kinds of ups and downs, but it's been a, a true pleasure to, to, to coach these guys. This has been a, a terrific group of guys, and, and certainly uh, we want to pay tribute to these seniors by playing our best tonight. Well, speaking of those guys, a couple of them in uniform, Ed Hart and Braxton Bonds, and of course, uh, they have been major contributors uh, for you this year. Stephen Osuji as well, who's really uh, contributed more and more as the season has gone along. Some guys that have really been integral parts, especially of this late season run. Yeah, all three of those guys are, are starters for us, and I think the, the fact that we can start them together is is uh, is really good for our team to kind of have senior leadership out there, uh, guys who, who've been down this road before and kind of know what to anticipate. And certainly, in Braxton, been with us three years, and and uh, and Stephen been with us five years, have been through the wars of, of the Southland, and, and Ed's been been through it one other time. So it's it's a group of guys that that really have have uh, shown senior leadership and done a good job of, of helping these younger guys grow and and uh, having them on the court uh, pay, playing major minutes for us and, and making major contributions for this team has really been important towards uh, what we've done late in the season. Talked about resilience a moment ago, but won the opening conference game, lost six in a row, and now you've won six of the last nine conference games. As you Look at that turnaround. Is there one or two things you can point to that have made the difference? You know, I don't know. I, I think we've become a little bit more consistent, and certainly I hope that continues. Uh, I think our, early on our, our team was really up and down. We'd play well for stretches of ball games and, and not so well for stretches. And and uh, and even, you know, game from, from game to game, we'd play well one game and, and not very very well the next. And, and we, we've – We've kind of gotten more of a consistency of effort uh, and focus as, as we've gotten later in the season, and, and I think that's again a tribute to to these guys that that have been here and and, and know what to anticipate and, and kind of know where we are and and what we have to do. 
Well, one of the guys I wanted to specifically talk to you about, and we've talked about him a couple of times before, is a guy you put in the starting lineup 10 games ago now. And in the 10 games he started, he's averaging over 13 points per game and uh, shooting about 56% from the floor. That's Ty Dalton. I know he's just a sophomore, but he is really one of those guys that's grown as the season has progressed. Yeah, he is a sophomore. He's a little bit of an older sophomore in that he, he, he went to a prep school out of high school and then has redshirted a year. So he's an older sophomore, and I think you can see that in the way he plays. Uh, he's one of those kind of deceiving guys. You you look at him and you don't don't realize he's, he's quite as athletic as he is, and, and he certainly you know he does smart things with the ball in his hands. He, he's picked up as we've gone along this year uh, our, our system and how we want to play and how he fits – well into that system and what he can do to make us a, a winning ball club and 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 as we've gotten later into the season he, he's one of those guys that's that's really taken it upon himself to to play hard night in and night out and and uh really has been, you know been a major reason why we've stepped it up here uh, of late uh as you noted incarnate word tonight uh they are sort of in the position we were in at this time of year last year um basically looking to play a spoilers role against their opponents this week. How do you guard against uh, letting down against this team tonight? Well, there's a couple things going on. One, it's senior night. And you don't you, you want to pay tribute to your seniors, but you don't want to have that become so, such an emotional uh, time that, that you take your eye off the ball, so to speak, and you, and you aren't focused in on what you need to do to, to win a very important ball game. Uh, and two, we have to take them seriously. That they're they're a very good ball club. I mean, they took Corpus to overtime you know, a few nights ago, and 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 very easily could have won that game. They were up most of the game, and and so and we were at their place. That was we had to fight like crazy to get back in that one just to have a chance. And and so it's uh, it's a team that's that's young. That they rely on some younger guys, but they're very talented. Um, and and given the situation, as you said, they're in they're dangerous because there's nothing for them to lose. They're coming in here loose and, and excited about playing another college basketball game and, and, and trying to play the role of spoiler. And so we've got to guard against that and, and make sure we come out with full focus and full effort on them tonight. You mentioned the earlier game against them over there in San Antonio, and you look at them on paper, and obviously it, it, it looks like they like to play at a slower pace than, than we do. But uh, that night they weren't afraid to go at a faster pace. Yeah, we'll we'll see if they're ready to do that tonight because that's certainly within our game plan, and and we want to get out and run and and see uh, how much we can we can get into their legs a little bit and 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 play uh, transition basketball with them and see what their transition defense is like. Last time we played, as you said, they 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 did not shy away from that, and 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 they pressed and 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 tried to do some things to even to even pick up the tempo a little bit, and so it's. Uh, it's a game that we've got to be very wary of, of, of their ability to shoot the ball and, and, and make sure our transition defense is very good uh, whenever we get out and, and, and you know get in that type of game. And, and then we've got to do the job we did when we played them over there on the glass. That was a big part of us getting the victory was the fact we, we did a really good job of, of rebounding. And then you know Jalen Gates was a big part of that game and, and, and the run we made late. And, and certainly we're going to uh, rely on him and others to, to step up and do some things offensively to help us uh, have an opportunity. Well, I know you've preached all year long that if you guys take care of your own business, it really doesn't matter what anybody else does. And I would imagine the guys have heard that again this week. Quite a bit. It's, 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 I've been pounding their head as much as I possibly can uh, that we don't need to worry about what else is going on around the league or, or what's going on pregame or, or whatever. We need to worry about what happens during, that, during our game, and all we can control is how we play. Uh, and and that's, that's the most important thing, and then let everything else kind of shake itself out. Good luck. All right, thank you. Ron Koch, well, the head coach of the Huskies, will take a timeout and come back. The starting lineups and all the play-by-play -play on the Husky Sports Network. Box combo with the lemonade, please. At Raisin Cane's, we do one thing, and we do it better than anyone else. So why not let our food do the talking? We hand-cut our lemons daily. They're fresh squeezed and mixed with 100% natural cane sugar. Love the window. Raisin Cane's, only the best chicken finger meals. One love. At Shipley Donuts, we make our donuts from scratch every single day. Nothing trucked in, frozen. 
And we are Texas born and raised since 1936. Not like those other guys. Shipley Donuts. Anyone can get you ready. Holiday and Express gets you the readiest. Because ready gives a pep talk. Showtime. But the readiest gives a pep rally. Holiday and Express. Be the readiest. You're listening to the Husky Sports Network, powered by DNA Studios. It would be great if human beings were great at being human. And if all of mankind were made up of kind women and kind men. It would be wonderful if common knowledge was knowledge commonly known. And if the light from being enlightened into every heart was shown. It would be glorious if neighbors were neighborly and indifference a forgotten word. It would be awesome if we shared everything and being greedy was absurd. It would be spectacular if the golden rule was golden to every man and the good things that we ever did was everything that we can. Treating others like we'd like to be treated has always been our guiding principle. Marriott Houston West Chase, a proud partner of HBU Athletics. And as you hear the strains of the national anthem, that tells us we're just about set to go here at Sharp Gym with the final home game of the regular season as the Huskies take on the Incarnate Word Cardinals. Starting lineups are ready to be introduced here in the gym to the folks on hand here on senior night. So let's take a moment and introduce them to you. First of all, the starters for the visitors from San Antonio, the Incarnate Word Cardinals. Under first-year head coach Carson Cunningham, they come in with a record of 6-23 and 23 overall and 1-15 and 15 in Southland Conference play. And they will send out this starting five, a six-foot freshman, 165-pounder from Austell, Georgia, plays at one guard. That's Dwight Murray, Jr. He'll be joined in the backcourt by six-foot-six redshirt sophomore from Chicago and Mount Carmel High School. Christian Peavy, the leading scorer on this team. Those guys will be joined by a wingman, six foot four, sophomore from Carrollton, Texas, and Carrollton Creekview High School. Augustine Ine, 9.6 points and three and a half rebounds per contest. Charles Brown III, a six seven senior, also starts tonight. He's from New Orleans and St. Augustine High School. He will get to go at one forward. 10.6 points and three rebounds per contest. And then Jordan Kite, 6'3", red shirt junior from San Antonio Clark High School. Kite averaging 2.7 points per contest and just under one rebound per game. That's the starters for Incarnate Word. Here are the starters for your HBU Huskies. First of all, at the point, a senior being recognized tonight, his final home game, redshirt senior from Nashville, Tennessee, 175 pounds, six foot two, guard leading steals per game in the conference, Braxton Bonds. He'll be joined in the backcourt by another senior, redshirt senior from here in Houston in Kincaid High School, Stephen Osuji. They'll be joined by a couple of sophomores on the wings, Ty Dalton, the 6'4 sophomore from Second Baptist High School, and Ian DeBose, the 6'4 sophomore from Durham, North Carolina, in the Ravencroft School. And then another senior, the 6'10, 245 pound center from Deer Valley High School and Mesa Community College out of the Phoenix, Arizona area. Edward Hart rounds out the starting five for head coach Ron Cottrell 
in his 28th season at the helm of the program. 486 wins under his belt. Looking for number 487 tonight to finish out the home portion of the schedule. And ready to go, Christian Peavy will be going up against Ed Hart. Roderick Dixon, the lead official. Tonight's crew ready to toss it up, and we're just about set to go. Peavy and Hart ready. The Huskies in the home white uniforms, and... Uh, the Cardinals in the road black with red numerals and trim, and they control the tip. And the Cardinal Word will have first possession, moving right to left as you listen in. And as you look on tonight on HBU TV, we're glad to have you along for the ride. Out top with the dribble, it's Augustine Ine. He'll go to Brown. Brown will take it into the paint, kick it back out on the wing to PV. PV averages just under 13 a game, and he puts it up from the elbow, won't go. And Ian DeBose with the board and off on the run. The Huskies go. We'll leave it right side for Bonds. He'll dribble at the arc. Takes it into the middle. Leave it off on the wing for Osuji. A three, and he got it. Left wing from the three-point line. And Stephen Osuji starts senior night out with the first three points of the ball game. 19-10 to go. Just underway in the first half. In the middle, Murray drives down. He's going to have it go out of bounds off of Incarnate Word. Huskies basketball. First turnover of the ball game. And the Huskies will bring it up. Bonds and Osuji across the timeline. No pressure on the ball as they come across. Suge holds it up out top. Now they sag off him. He drives into the middle, floats it up, and it comes off the iron. Won't go. The rebound tip, but controlled by Kite for the Cardinals, and he'll bring it back the other way. Kite goes to Peavy. Peavy will kick it back out top to Brown. He's going to fire away at a three, and he got it to go. Charles Brown with the first points of the ball game for the Cardinals. He averages just over 10 points per contest. He's got their first three tonight. Into the left corner, Ty Dalton looks inside, but kicks it back out on top. Osuji gives it back to Dalton, and he goes up and under and reverses it in for the first two for Ty tonight. Averaging 13.6 per game since he's been inserted into the starting lineup. Back the other way in a hurry. Murray found the slot and went left side and drove it in and got the layup. Ties us back up at five. Under 18 to go. Here's DuBose into the middle to Ed Hart, and he's got a point-blank look off the glass, and Ed has his first two of the ball game, and it's 7-5. Back and forth we go early on in this one. You heard Coach Cottrell say it in the pregame show. He wants to push the tempo again tonight. Huskies, the 25th leading scoring team in the nation. Here's a runner into the paint put up. A little floater by Christian Peavy, and he ties us back up at seven apiece. It looks like we're going to go back and forth here for at least a little while. Hart cross court to Osuji, fires away at a three, and he got it with a hand in his face. Peavy kind of looks to the bench and palms up, says, I don't know what I can do, coach. But Osuji now has six, and the Huskies are back up by three. Roll down to the 17-minute mark. Murray gets it into the paint to Brown. Brown with a little floater. Won't go. Rattles out, and the Huskies grab the board. Dubose off on the run. Follows a blocker. That's Ed Hart, and he drives by and lays it up and in for two. Ian Dubose with his first point to the ball game. Huskies leading scorer on the season, averaging 17 a game. And it's 12-7 HBU. Here's Brown again from uh, the right corner, and he gets another three to go. Check it, they're going to say he was inside the arc, so give him two. It's 12-9, Huskies. DuBose will try to answer with the three on the opposite end, right side, and it won't go. Kite with the rebound, almost a steal by Bonds, but he get it up ahead to Murray. Murray down to Peavy, and Peavy will lay it up and in. Barely got it over the rim, but he did, and they're back to within one, 12-11. Here's Bonds going to drive through the middle, floats it up, spins off the iron, won't go. He can't put the tip back up and in. And Hart can't come up with the rebound. It'll be controlled by Ine. He'll bring it up the floor, drives it in, float around, spin on the baseline, won't go. Peavy underneath tries to fight for the rebound. He's going to be fouled. They're going to call the foul on Ian DeBose. 
That'll stop the clock with 15.54 to go here in the first half of play. It brings us to our first media timeout of the contest. Huskies with a one-point lead here on the Husky Sports Network and HBU TV. We're made up of kind women and kind men. It would be wonderful if common knowledge was knowledge commonly known. And if the light from being enlightened into every heart was shown. It would be glorious if neighbors were neighborly and indifference a forgotten word. It would be awesome if we shared everything and being greedy was absurd. It would be spectacular if the golden rule was golden to every man. And the good things that we ever did was everything that we can. Treating others like we'd like to be treated has always been our guiding principle. Marriott Houston West Chase, a proud partner of HBU Athletics. Four minutes, six seconds into our ball game tonight. The Huskies have a 12-11 lead as we come back to the Sharp Tank here on a Wednesday night. Huskies out of the gate are five of eight from the floor. Same number applies for the Cardinals as well. Both teams shooting 63% overall from the floor. And Carter Word has hit the only three-point shot they've taken tonight, one for one. And the Huskies are two of three outside the arc. And Hence the one point difference. Neither team has been to the free throw line yet. Carnet Word with the basketball on the baseline, get it inbounds, and they do. Jordan Caruso is checked in. He's got the basketball on the right angle. Gets it down to Brown on the baseline, tries to go inside, tipped away and stolen by DuBose. Bounce pass to Bonds, he'll take it up, get it to go, and he's fouled. Bonds with the finish, and he'll go to the line for a plus one opportunity. DuBose will get the assist on the play, and Braxton, aggressive move to the basket, and played through the contact to get the shot up. And he gets it to go. The free throw is good as well. The Huskies up now by four. Braxton with his first three points of the ball game. 15-11 is our score. Caruso with the dribble, kicks it into the paint. That is Ine, he's gonna pull up at the elbow, put up the jumper and he gets his shot to go, his first points of the ball game. Ine on the board, back to within two are the Cardinals of Incarnate Word. Ian DeBose out top to Ed Hart, left side to Osuji, back to Bonds, Bonds back to Osuji. Now they feed it into the post, Hart kicks it out quickly to DeBose, a three won't go, the rebound tipped and Dalton saves it. New shot clock for the Huskies. Baseline right to DeBose. He's going to drive in, and he's going to be fouled. Brown tried to get in his way. He's going to be called for the block, and it'll send Ian to the free throw line to shoot a pair here. Fourteen fifty-one to go. Well, now they're going to say the foul was before the shot attempt, so no free throws here. Just the second team foul on Incarnate Word, not a shooting foul. Antoine Smith is going to check in for Incarnate Word. Oliver Lynch Daniels checks in for the Huskies for the first time tonight. And the inbounds pass comes out top to Ed Hart. He'll give it to Bonds. Bonds drop down to the baseline. Now kick it back out to Ollie. Bounce pass in low to Hart, turn around in the paint, and it won't stay down. Would not go. Bounced on the iron a couple of times. Comes off to Smith for the Cardinals. Kite to Caruso. Skip step in the paint, float it up, count it. Ties us up at 15, and Jordan Caruso is fouled. And the foul is going to be on Braxton Bonds. That'll be number two on Bonds. That'll get Jalen Gates up off the bench. And he will check in after the first free throw by Caruso. It is good. Bonds with the two fouls will go get a breather for a little while. 
And it's early, but you hope you haven't seen the last of Braxton here in the first half, but that's a distinct possibility with two fouls the rest of the way. Here's Dalton, takes a feed from DuBose, wide open for a three. And Ty will hit that shot. You can't leave him alone. He gets the bucket and puts the Huskies back up by two, 18-16. Caruso in through traffic. Leave it for Murray. Murray to the middle. Now out top to Smith. Open for a three. Top of the arc. And he got it. Antoine Smith, 37% shooter from the three-point line, averaging seven and a half points per contest. He's got his first three of the ball game tonight. DeBose lobs it down low to Hart. Hart's going to put it on the floor, drive it in, and he goes up and over Smith. Size advantage there, and Ed's a little quicker than you might expect, too. And he got by a Smith into the rack. Gives the Huskies a lead back, 2019. Smith, though, with another three, going to fire away and pulled hard out away from the basket, and he gets the three to go. He's got six now. And Incarnate Word back up by two. Dalton from DuBose is going to drive it in, reverses it up again. Ty with his third bucket of the night. He's got seven, and the Huskies... Tie it back up. We're going back and forth in this one. Ties and lead changes. Murray into the paint, floats it up, and rattles it down through for the Cardinals. 24-22, incarnate word by two. Ollie Lynch Daniels off to Jay Gates for a three. Short off the iron rebound. Controlled by Caruso for the Cardinals. Off to Kite. Stops at the arc. Thought about a three. Gets it back to Caruso instead. Screen from Smith, take it down left side, leave it off the glass, and it won't go, and DuBose gets it off on the run. Lynch Daniels up ahead, going to put it up, won't go, but Gates with the follow, and he'll be fouled and go to the line. Jalen Gates with an excellent follow on that miss. Got the put back to go up and in. Ties us up at 24, and Jay will go to the free throw line. He had a great second half the first time these two teams met over in San Antonio. Big second half that helped the Huskies erase a halftime deficit and come back for a 96-92 victory at the McDermott Center. He gets the free throw here. Gates now with three points. Huskies up by one, 25-24. Murray into the paint, spins around on Lynch Daniels, puts it up. He's fouled and count the bucket. It'll go. And Murray takes it in and gets the easy bucket and will go to the line for a plus one. Third foul on the Huskies, first foul on Lynch Daniels. Dwight Murray. At the free throw line this year, an 85% free throw shooter. He gets this one to go and gives Incarnate Word a two-point lead, 27-25. Jay Gates back up the floor and has it tipped away. Caruso, nice bounce pass up ahead to Murray, and he gets behind everybody and lays it up and in. Suddenly, Murray's got seven. They're up by four, 29-25. Dalton, right side. Drives it in. Ben Yoloko down low, checked in during the timeout. Dalton spin around in the paint, floats up a little five-footer. And the rainbow has a pot of gold at the end of it. He's got nine, and the Huskies are back to within two. 29-27. Smith for a long-range three, and he finds the bottom of the cords again. Well, that's going to be an interesting matchup if they keep him out there a lot. Now Coach Cottrell is going to go get Jackson Stent because he's pulling the big guys out away from the bucket. Here's a give and go, DuBose to Yoloko. He hits the deck hard, fouled underneath. The shot won't go. Ben still down on the deck, under the basket, slow to get up. And he's a little wobbly, but up on his feet. And I think he's feeling the effects of that awkward landing. It brings us to a timeout on the floor. 11.15 to go here in the first half of play. The Huskies trailing by five, 32-27 on the Husky Sports Network.
What's on your mind, kid? Make it fast. I'd like to work here at Jimmy John's World's Greatest Gourmet Sandwich Shop, sir. Why do you want to work at Jimmy John's, kid? I'm perfect for Jimmy John's. Doing what? Delivery. Delivery? Delivery. We deliver pretty fast here at Jimmy John's. That's what I heard. What'd you hear? You deliver pretty fast here at Jimmy John's. Then you heard right. I'm a fast study, sir. You know the Jim John slogan? The Jimmy John slogan. Jim John's slogan is sub so fast you'll freak. Sub so fast you'll freak is a swell slogan, sir. When people call for a Jimmy John sandwich, they want it fast. Then I'm your man, sir. How so? Because I'm fast. Fast at what? Fast at everything. Can you deliver fast? I can deliver fast. How fast? I can run at 440 and 220. Minutes? No seconds. That's fast. You deliver before? I delivered newspapers before. Were you fast? Very fast. How fast? People got tomorrow's paper today. That's fast. So do I have the job? Not so fast. How do I know you're not just some fast talker? I can get your references. When? Now. These are good references. Thank you. But at Jimmy John's, you gotta be more than fast. More than fast. You gotta be polite. Fast and polite. Fast and polite. I can do fast and polite. Okay, give me some time to think it over. Okay. Okay, I've thought it over. When can you start? Now. Now is good. What's your name, kid? Stefan Amalavadopoulos. Too long. How about Ed? That's fine. Welcome aboard, Ed. Jimmy John Subs, an official sponsor of HBU Athletics. We've got 11.15 to go here in the first half. And Ben Yoloko is going to be at the free throw line as we come out of the timeout. Ben still favoring, looks like that right leg as he heads to the free throw line, but gets the first one to go. Ben will have one more to come. And it is good as well. He'll make both free throws and then check out as Jackson Stent will check in. This is a defensive substitution as much as anything, as we'd mentioned. The guys who are playing in the middle for Incarnate Word are actually pulling the big guys out to the perimeter, and Stent a little better suited for that kind of play. There's Caruso, drives down, cut off, but he spins around, puts it up, rolls off the iron, won't go, and Stent with the board for the Huskies. Down by three. They can bring it to within one or tie on this possession. Gates into the right corner to DeBose. Picked up by Caruso. Going to drive in. Float it up. Got it to go. And he will have four points now. Brings us back to within one. 32-31. Incarnate word, by the way, only eight guys in uniform tonight. Here's a jumper from the wing put up by Ine. And he gets it to go. Augustine Ine. With a bucket, he's got five now. It's 35-31, they're back up to a four point lead. Here's a lob inside intended for Ty Dalton. He's gonna be fouled. It's gonna be on Cody Graham. Graham, a six foot sophomore from Fresno, Texas, right here in the Houston area. Out of St. Pius X High School. And it'll be Huskies basketball. Dalton and DuBose will check out. Quan Murphy and Philip McKenzie check in for the Huskies. Lynch Daniels, left angle at the arc. Picked up by Smith, gonna pull up, pop. Too strong off the back iron and the rebound's gonna bounce all the way out to Antoine Smith. He'll give it off to Murray and Murray will bring it up. Picked up by Lynch Daniels, backs down. No look pass to Smith. Smith in the paint, three seconds, no call. Kick it out to Graham, Graham back down to Smith and we got an offensive foul called on Smith, he can't believe it. But Rod Dixon says he cleared out with his offhand as he was trying to back in on Stent. And that will be the first foul on Smith, number six on the Cardinals. Huskies bring it up. Gates, left side to Murphy, Murphy to Stent, back to the basket, he'll swing it cross court to Gates into the right corner. Tolly Lynch Daniels drives down. He's going to be bumped. And that foul is going to be on Smith again. Two quick ones on Antoine Smith. That's number seven on the Cardinals. So bonus the rest of the way for the Huskies. Smith with two fouls checks out. Peavy will check back in. So with the short bench tonight for Carson Cunningham. Keep an eye on the foul situation for Incarnate Word as the night progresses. Holly Lynch Daniels with the first free throw gets it to go. Oliver on the season, a 63% free throw shooter. And the second one gets a friendly bounce and drops down through, gets them both. Holly averages just under nine a game. 
He's got his first two of the night here, and the Huskies are back to within two. Here's Graham, drives in, blocked by Gates, and we're going to get a whistle. Huskies fans don't think there was any kind of a foul there. But Graham's going to go to the free throw line for a pair of free throws here. Fourth foul on the Huskies, first foul on Jalen Gates. And Graham's free throw bounces out, won't stay down. One more to come. Incarnate Word, the best free throw shooting team in Division I basketball, 81.1% as a squad this year. They've got some guys up in the upper 80s and 90% range, one out of two as Graham gets a second one to go. He, in fact, is one of the lower total guys, averaging uh, or with a 75% make rate at the line, and a ball knocked out of bounds by Incarnate Word. 75% is top end for a lot of teams. So that tells you how good Incarnate Word has been at the stripe this year. Huskies get it inbound. Stent back to Lynch Daniels. Dribbles around and leave it for Quan Murphy. Right of the arc. Going to drive into the paint. Stops in the paint and tried to reverse pivot. And he shuffled the foot. Traveling call. Stops the clock with 9.03 to go. Oliver Lynch Daniels will check out. And Osuji will check back in. Three-point game, 36-33. Cardinals with the lead and the basketball. Caruso is checked back in for the Cardinals. Gets it back out top to Murray. Murphy to Peavy intended that way. And Osuji got a foot on it, knocks it out of bounds. 20 seconds going to be put on the shot clock with 8.48 to go on the game clock. And Caruso will get it inbounds just to our left. Goes into Murray. Murray to Graham. Back out top to Murray. Murray finds Peavy now. He'll drive it in on Stent. Takes it in. Partially blocked by Jackson Stent. And then Peavy steps on the end line. Loses it out of bounds. It'll be Huskies basketball with 8.30 to go. Till halftime. HBU down by three. Had a couple of leads in this game. Their biggest lead has been five points. In fact, that's been the biggest lead for either team. Here's a whistle and a foul. It's going to be on Augustine Ine. His first foul, eighth team foul, and it's going to send Jackson Stent to the free throw line. Jackson. Big contributor these last few games. The Huskies won six of their last nine games. The free throw here won't go. One and one, so he won't get the second one. The Huskies still down by three as they drop back on defense. Murray in through traffic. Spin around, leave it in the corner for Graham. Puts up a three, won't go. And Quan Murphy with the board for HBU. Quan will bring it up himself. Going to drive in coast to coast. Flout it off the glass. Won't go, but he's going to be fouled. And the foul is going to be on Peavy. That'll be the first on Christian Peavy, and it'll be number nine on the team. So Quan Murphy will have a couple of free throws to come here. Quan has seen his playing time increase over the last several games. He's appeared now in his 19th game with this one. Gets the first free throw to go here. He's got his minutes per game average up to 9.6, so just under 10 minutes a game now for Quan. 60% shooter at the free throw line this year. That has steadily increased, though, lately. And the second one rattles around, won't go down. Loose ball on the floor, but Ine saves it for the Cardinals. Huskies within two, 36-34. Ine drives in, got a screen from Brown, and he's going to roll it up with the left hand and get it to go down through. Ine now... With seven points, the Huskies back down by four. McKenzie to Murphy, out to Gates. Gates for a three, got it. No shot too far out. And Jalen's got his first long-range jumper of the night. The Huskies are within one, 38-37. 
Caruso right side. Murphy on him. Now Stent pops out to help. Murphy, or check it. Caruso drives down. Give it to Brown on the baseline. He puts up a wild shot, but it hits the glass and drops down through. Got it to go. And Incarnate Word now has a 40-37 lead. Murphy going to take it in. Bumped on his way to the rack. That's going to be a foul on Brown. It'll be his second. Stops the clock with 7.03 to go. Quan Murphy will have free throws when we come back. The Huskies trail by three in a close but back and forth affair here in this first half on the Husky Sports Network. Every morning and uh, have sampled just about every kolache that they make here. Bacon, egg, and cheese on wheat for me, and then the rest is for the office. So, yes, I'll pick up every Friday. I'll stop by here and pick up some for my group. So. Well, I used to think it was just fruit-filled stuff, and then I came here, and there's eggs and bacon and cheese and all kinds of good stuff in there. It's like a whole breakfast and a bun. It's great. <laughs> it's always a good thing if you can eat healthy and not know it. <laughs> you drive down the street looking for something to eat, you're going to pass five places to buy a sandwich, six places to buy a burger. There's only one place you can get a kolache, and that's Kolache Factory. It's delicious. You're going to have people that try to copy you, but they're not going to do it as well. We know what we're doing. We've been doing it for 25 years. We do it the best, and our success proves that. Houston's own Kolache Factory, the freshest, highest quality, best-tasting kolaches in town. Over 50 Houston area locations and a proud partner of HVU Athletics. <laughs> Seven oh three to go in the first half of this game. Huskies trail by three. Both teams just shooting lights out here in the first half. HBU 13 of 21 for 62% from the floor. But Incarnate Word is even better. 16 of 22 for 73% from the floor. They're five of six from the three-point line. The Huskies four of seven. Quan Murphy at the free throw line as we come out of the timeout, and he's going to try to bring the Huskies back to within one with a couple of free throws here. The first one goes. Quan off the bench tonight now has two points. Two of three at the free throw line. Hart and DeBose about to check back in. Second free throw is good. Murphy gets it to go. He's got three points. Jackson Stent and Murphy will check out. And DuBose and Hart head back out onto the floor. So Huskies drop back on defense. Ine across the timeline with the basketball in his right hand. Now switches the dribble. Looks to the middle. Kick it out on the wing to Graham. Cody Graham back out to Brown for a three. Off the iron this time. And Hart with the rebound. Long outlet up ahead to Osuji. Take it into the middle. He can't get it to go. The follow put back by Gates would not go down. Graham off with the board for Incarnate Word. Leave it for Ine, and he'll spin it up and in with an acrobatic move. And the lead is back out to three. Here's Gates the other way. Going to try to drive in through a double team. Splits it, but he's going to be fouled by Murray. Double bonus now the rest of the way for the Huskies. So Gates will go to the free throw line for two free throws here. With 6.24 to go. Gates at the line. Nice touch, nice form. Gets the first one to go. Jalen on the season, averaging eight a game. One more to come here and gets the friendly at bounce and it goes down through. 42-41, the Huskies draw back to within one. Ine up the floor. Finds Caruso, back to Ine. They'll swing it around the arc, left side to Graham. Screen from Brown, he'll kick it back out on the right wing to Ine. Drive in, pull up at the elbow, won't go. Rebound tipped and gonna be knocked out of bounds. We're gonna say Dalton knocked it out. He went up over Charles Brown. We're gonna get a timeout on the floor called by Incarnate Word. <clears throat> it's gonna be a 30 second timeout, so we'll hang on to it right here. Six minutes and five seconds to go till halftime. At the half, we'll update you on the conference scoreboard. The Huskies 
keeping a particular eye on Central Arkansas at Sam Houston State tonight and Northwestern State at Nichols. If both incarnate or check it, uh, both Northwestern State and Central Arkansas lose and the Huskies win here, that clinches a tournament berth for the Huskies and Saturday's game would be for seeding purposes. Right now, Nichols way out in front of Northwestern State with about seven and a half minutes to go in the first half, 32 to 14 there. And Central Arkansas has a four point lead over Sam Houston State early in the second half of their game up in Huntsville. Carnivore basketball and a bounce pass to Caruso. Wow. DuBose popped out trying to get the steal. He got the body instead and Rod Dixon calls him for the foul. First foul on Ian. It'll be the fifth foul on the Huskies. Side out to our left and Incarnate Word gets it inbounds. Caruso to the middle, left to right, going to lob it down low for Ine. Got it over hard. Somehow he managed to stretch out and outreach Ed and lay it up and in. The other way, here's Gates with the three, and Jalen Gates ties us back up. Huskies are even again at 44, and Jay Gates now has 11 here in the first half. Caruso. To Graham. Graham holds it up with Gates on him. Screen from Brown drives it in. Leave it on the baseline. Caruso tries to go back to Brown. Almost to steal, but Brown saves it. And now we're going to get a whistle and a foul. Bumping bodies over there on the right angle. Stephen Osuji. That'll be the first foul on Suge. Number six on the Huskies. Stops the clock with 5.17 to go. And the next foul by HBU will put UIW in the bonus. A little housekeeping to be done where the bodies hit the deck over there at the right elbow. Now Caruso on the baseline goes down low to inbound it to Kite. Kite will go out top to Graham. Graham to Ine, back to Graham. Kite wants a basketball. Now we'll give it back to Cody Graham. Bounce pass into the middle. Brown back to Kite, open for a three, and he got it. Kite's got the range. Local product right out of the San Antonio High School area. And here's a runner in the paint. Ian DeBose gets it to go, and he's fouled. And he will go to the line with an opportunity to tie us back up. Foul is going to be on Ine. Second foul on Ine. Now they've got three guys here in the first half with two fouls at least. Ian DeBose at the line gets it to go. Antoine Smith with two fouls is going to check back in. Actually, Murray has three fouls. He's back on the bench. Cody Graham sits down as Smith checks back in with two fouls. Basketball out top. Give it to Ina. Ina will look inside, finds Kite. Kite to Brown, left wide open for a three. He measures it and hits it. And they are just crazy from the three-point line tonight. Seven of nine, 78%. Here's Gates going to try to answer with the three. Shot won't go, but he's going to be fouled. And Jay will have three free throws to come. <coughs> with 4.19 to go on the first half clock. Foul was charged to Jordan Caruso. That's now two on Caruso. So they've got four of their eight available players tonight with at least two fouls here. Jay gets the first free throw to go. He's got two more to come. Gates now with a dozen points to lead all scorers. Make it 13, and he's got one more free throw yet to come. And it is good. Five for five at the stripe tonight. And Jalen ties us back up. We're already halfway to 100. We've still got four minutes plus to go in the first half. Here's Smith. Got to look at a three. Too strong this time, and the rebound comes off to Ian DeBose. 
Pushes it up the floor into the front court. Going to drive in, float it up, won't go, and the rebound pulled down by Ine. Ian thought there was some contact there, but Ine off the other way in a hurry. Leaving for Kite. Kite to Brown at the circle. Get it down low to Smith, and Smith will lay it up and in over Dalton. Gets a bucket to go, and 52-50. Carnivore jumps back out front. Now here's Dalton. Can't get it to go, but right there for the rebound is Ed Hart. Ed gets the put back up and in. He's got six, and the Huskies tie us back up at 52. We are on a pace for some points tonight, folks. Ine dribbles to the middle, and the Hart's going to get him with the knee. That'll be the first foul called on Ed, seventh on the team. It'll stop the clock with 3.20 to go. It's going to send Ine to the free throw line. But first, we'll hit a timeout, our final media stop of the first half. Huskies and the Car Incarnate Word Cardinals tied up at 52 on the Husky Sports Network and HBU TV. You can always count on Houston Federal Credit Union to be there for you because once a member, always a member. Take advantage of all their products and services to help you in all your financial milestones, such as purchasing your first car, planning your dream wedding, buying a home, and planning for retirement. Stop by any of their convenient locations or visit their website, www.houstonfcu.org, and experience the credit union difference today. Dogs up. I am strong. I won't give up. I put my heart into the game. I learned from my mistakes. Focus. Determination. Confidence. I trust my gut. No limits. Preparation. Dedication. Leadership. I want to make my team and family proud. And be an inspiration for other girls who like sports. Join, Join the, the movement. movement. Under Armour. Hi, this is Ron Cottrell, head coach of the HBU Huskies. Thanks for listening to Huskies Basketball on the DNA Husky Sports Network. Fifty-two, fifty-two. as we come back to the Sharp Tank here. Three minutes, 20 seconds away from halftime. Again, a reminder, we want you to stick around. Join us at the half for the Huskies Halftime Report. We'll recap all the first half stats. Take a look at the conference scoreboard. We'll also check in on the women's game. The Huskies women on the road tonight. As they finish up their final week of the season. Out traveling around the state of Texas. And they are in San Antonio tonight to take on the Incarnate Word Lady Cardinals. Ine makes the first free throw here, gets the second one to go as well. Gets them both and gives them a two-point lead again, 54-52. Bonds back out on the floor for the Huskies with two fouls. He's going to yo-yo out top. Swings it left side to Osuji. Suj looks inside, but DuBose pops out high. They take a feed. Bonds right angle to Dalton into the corner. So Osuji drives the baseline, leave it down low for Hart. He's going to go up, but he's fouled. Got Brown up off his feet, and Charles came down on his elbow. And Ed will go to the free throw line. Third foul now on uh, Brown. Let's check that number and make sure that information is correct. We show him. Check it. They call it on uh, Caruso, I guess. They gave it to Caruso. So that's a break for Brown, but a bad break for Caruso. One out of two at the line for Ed. The Huskies down by one. Caruso back the other way. Going to be pushed by Osuji underneath. Got the bucket to go anyway. And he's fouled and will have a plus one opportunity and can give the Cardinals a four-point lead here with 2.45 to go till halftime. 56-53. Can't stress how <laughs> high a scoring game this is. And Incarnate Word shooting 70% from the floor. The free throw attempt, though, by Caruso is no good. And it's still a three-point contest. Dalton takes a feed from DuBose. Gets it back. Now down low to Ed Hart. Hart's going to take it in and lay it up and in. And... That time Caruso decided not to force the action too hard. He didn't want to pick up his fourth foul. 
He'll dribble down low with a bounce pass to Brown, and Brown got behind everybody and gets the easy layup and in. Jalen Gates ready to check back in on the next stoppage. Two minutes and change to go in the first half. Bonds out top. Looks right side to Dalton. Dalton got out of the gates quickly tonight. Been a little quiet since. Here's a lob alley oop down low. Jam it down through for ID, and he's fouled and will go to the line. Foul is going to be on Brown. That'll be his second. And Osuji checks out. Gates checks in, and the fans here in the arena are pumped up just a little bit. Nice little alley-oop feed. The free throw won't go, though. That would have set the house down. But the Huskies still trail by one. Minute 45 to go in the first half. Cody Graham back out on the floor. Pulls up on the dribble. Finds Brown. Elbow jumper from the right side. He rattles it home. Brown having a good first half offensively. He's got 14 now. Leads the way for the Cardinals. And they're back up by three. 60 to 57 as the shots are falling at a high rate tonight for the Cardinals. Dalton takes a feed from Bonds into the corner to Gates for a three, won't go. Hart gets the rebound, puts it up and in for two. Ed Hart with the put back, has 11 now. The Huskies are back to within one, 60 to 59. We roll under a minute to go here as Graham brings it up, hands it off to Kite. Kite picked up by Bonds. Give it to Ine, right elbow to Brown, picked up by Hart this time, swings it to Smith, he'll drive in, kick it back out, Brown open for a three. This one comes up short, and the Huskies with the board. Long outlet, up ahead to Bonds, he's going to take it in, and it's goaltending. Count the bucket, Braxton Bonds will get the bucket, and the Huskies will recapture the lead for the first time in a long time. And we've got 43.7 seconds to go. Coach Cottrell wants to use up his Use it or lose it timeout here. So he'll gather his team around him here with a short 30-second timeout. And they'll talk things over. Some defensive strategy here. Charles Brown finally missed a three-point shot on that last attempt. He's now two of four from outside the arc, six of nine overall. He's leading them in scoring with 14 points. Jalen Gates has 14 for the Huskies to lead the way. Ed Hart's in double digits with 11. Ian DeBose and Ty Dalton each with nine apiece. Six for Osuji. Five for Braxton Bonds. Two off the bench for Oliver Lynch Daniels. Quan Murphy has three as well. 61 60s. 60. Huskies with the one point lead as the Cardinals bring it up into the front court. Graham. It's going to bounce pass underneath. The Ine goes up with an acrobatic leap. And high off the glass, it drops down through. He hung in the air for just a split second and got the shot off. And they've got the lead again, 62-61. 16 seconds to go on the game clock. The Huskies will have the final shot of the first half if they want it. Ty Dalton had a look at a three, kicks it in the corner instead to Gates. Gates for three, got it. Three seconds to go. Graham will throw it up at the buzzer, and he almost got it. Hits the front iron and bounces off, and the Huskies will go to the locker room at the break with a 64-62 lead. That's right, folks. That's not a final score. That's a halftime score. We'll take a timeout. We'll come back with the Huskies halftime report after this on the Husky Sports Network. The Firehouse subs, subs are hot, hearty, and extraordinary. Every sub helps provide life-saving equipment for first responders. So more people eating at Firehouse subs means more life-saving equipment donated to first responders. If you're gonna have a sub, have one that makes a difference. Try the new spicy Cajun chicken sub with grilled chicken breast, just $5.55 for a medium. Firehouse subs, enjoy more subs, save more lives. The body is incredibly powerful. It's so nimble and fluid, but sometimes we push it too far. 
That's when you need the strength of Memorial Hermann and our body of affiliated orthopedic specialists. With our renowned Ironman Sports Medicine Institute, they not only get your body back to where it was, they get it to go further. It's what makes us more than just hospitals. We are a body of experts. Memorial Hermann, advancing health. Tammy and I have been going steady since high school. Tammy and Tommy, two peas in a pod, as they say. We have all the same friends. We like all the same things. I mean, we practically even have the same name. But there's one thing we could just never agree on. Soda. <sighs> I have been begging him all these years to just try Pepsi, and I knew he would change his tune. Yeah, yeah. So, finally, I had him take the Pepsi taste challenge. And go on, tell him what you told me, Tommy. <sighs> I'm a Pepsi man. Mmm. <sighs> right? Gosh, isn't Pepsi so good? I tell you what, I don't know why I didn't try it sooner. Me neither. It's so crisp and refreshing and bubbly. Like me. <laughs> like you. I'm always right. She's always right. <laughs> All across the South, people are choosing the great taste of Pepsi. Take the Pepsi Taste Challenge and let your taste decide. This is not a hotel. It's an idea that travel should be brilliant. The promise of spaces as expansive as your imagination. Offering surprises that will change as often as you do. This is not business as usual. It's a new way to inspire create and yes dream because it's not only about where you're staying it's about where you're going marry travel brilliantly How fast you were going, son? Call me Ed. Do you know how fast you were going, Ed? You mean exactly? Yes, exactly. No, not exactly. How fast? Fast. Fast, sir? You were going very fast. Fast is my job, officer. Fast is your job? Yes, sir. What kind of job? I deliver, sir. What do you deliver? The world's greatest gourmet sandwiches. I thought Jimmy John's had the world's greatest gourmet sandwiches. Jimmy John's does have the world's greatest gourmet sandwiches. So you deliver for Jimmy John's? I deliver for Jimmy John's. So do you always deliver fast? I always deliver fast. How fast? I deliver subs so fast you freak. It's not smart to freak a cop, son. You didn't order Jimmy John's sub, sir. So if I did order a Jimmy John's sub, when would I get it? Now. What if I don't want it now? Then call later. Or I could pick it up myself. Or you could pick it up yourself. Because I'm pretty fast too. I'm sure you are, sir. Very fast. I believe you, sir. Faster than you. No way, sir. Way faster. In your dreams. You dissing me, son. No, sir. I'm polite. Fast and polite. Very polite and very, very fast. Is that a challenge, son? No, sir. It's a fact. Let's burn rubber, kid. It wouldn't be fair. Why not? You've got a fully blown V8 Camaro with slicks and headers. So? I've got a 10 speed bike. I'll let you off with a warning. Jimmy John Subs, an official sponsor of HBU Athletics. IBW wants to build Houston office buildings, healthcare centers, information data centers, airports, and heck, we would like to build everything. Our commitment is all our electricians are Americans with a birth certificate, social security card, high school diploma, and drug tested. Plus, we're trained at an accredited five-year electrical school. We're career American people. My question, does this even matter? Visit whobuildshouston.com. The time is now to hire IBEW electricians. At Shipley Donuts, we make our donuts from scratch every single day. Nothing trucked in, frozen. And we are Texas born and raised since 1936. Not like those other guys. Shipley Donuts. At Holiday Inn Express, we can't guarantee that you'll be able to contain yourself at our breakfast bar. Morning, egg white omelet. Sup, lady bacon. Fruit. There it is. But we can guarantee that you'll get the best price when you book with us. Holiday Inn Express. Be the readiest. The real story is I'm in here every morning and sample just about every kolache that they make here. Bacon, egg, and cheese on wheat for me, and then the rest is for the office. So yes, I I'll pick up every Friday. I'll stop by here and pick up some for my group. So. Well, I used to think it was just fruit-filled stuff, and then I came here, and there's eggs and bacon and cheese and all kinds of good stuff in there. It's like a whole breakfast and a bun. It's great. <laughs> it's always a good thing if you can eat healthy and not know it. <laughs> you drive down the street looking for something to eat, you're going to pass five places to buy a sandwich, six places to buy a burger. There's only one place you can get a kolache, and that's Kolache Factory. It's delicious. You're going to have people that try to copy you, but they're not going to do it as well. We know what we're doing. We've been doing it for 25 years. We do it the best, and our success proves that. Houston's own Kolache Factory, the freshest, highest quality, best-tasting kolaches in town. Over 50 Houston area locations and a proud partner of HBU Athletics. You're listening to the Husky Sports Network, powered by DNA Studios. 
And welcome back into Sharp Gym here. We're at halftime of our game between your HBU Huskies and the Incarnate Word Cardinals. And what a first half we've had here. 126 points put up on the scoreboard tonight by both teams combined in the first 20 minutes of play. And the shooting percentages reflect that, those numbers. First of all, for the Huskies, good looking numbers across the board 64%. Overall free field goal percentage tonight, 60%, 6 of 10 from the three-point line, and then 16 of 20 for 80% from the free throw line tonight. Those are good-looking numbers any way you split them up. But then you look across the ledger at UIW's numbers. They are 71% overall shooting from the floor tonight, 64% from the three-point line, 7 of 11 from the three. They've only been to the free throw line seven times tonight, but they've made five of seven for 71%. And so this has understandably been a high scoring affair thanks to hot shooting by both teams tonight. The Huskies been out rebounded by one, uh, 14 to 13. Carnet Word with a one board edge. There just hadn't been a lot of Rebounds to go around, though, because the sh shots are falling at such a high rate tonight. There's only been six total offensive boards. The Huskies have a 4-2 edge in offensive rebounding. The, so they're plus two there. They've been out-rebounded on the defensive end. 12-9 there, Incarnate Word with the advantage. So thus the one-point edge, 14-13 for the Cardinals. Not a lot of turnovers in the first half either. Just four for Incarnate Word, two for the Huskies. So points off turnovers are very low. 5-2 advantage for HBU in that regard. Points in the paint have come often tonight. 30 points for either team in the paint tonight. Huskies with an edge in second chance points. 7-2 advantage there. And also in fast break points, 8-2 edge on the transition buckets. Individually speaking, the Huskies are led by Jalen Gates, who's got 17 points tonight. He's joined in double digits by Edward Hart, who's got 11. Then a couple of guys knocking on the door at nine points, Ian DuBose and Ty Dalton, starting wingmen for the Huskies. They're joined by Stephen Osuji, who has six, five for Braxton Bonds, three for Quan Murphy, and two each for Oliver Lynch Daniels and Ben Yuloko. Jackson Stent, Philip McKenzie, each got about four minutes of floor time in the first half, but did not score. Leading rebounder for the Huskies is Ian DeBose. He's got five rebounds. He's also leading the way in assists with five of those as well. For Incarnate Word, three players in double digits. Charles Brown leads the way with 14 points. Six of nine from the floor for Brown, two of four at the arc. He's got 14 points. 13 from Augustine Ine. Five of seven overall shooting for Ine. He's one for one at the arc, two of two at the free throw line. And then 11 points for Antoine Smith off the bench. Four of five from the floor, including three of four from the three-point line. So those are the three players for the Cardinals in double figures. They've got Murray with nine, five from Jordan Caruso, three each from Jordan Kite and Cody Graham. And then four from Christian Peavy. So plenty of scoring uh, to go around for the Cardinals. Uh, as we mentioned, they only have eight guys in uniform tonight. They've all seen floor time. They've all put shots up, and they've all gotten on the scoreboard tonight. Now here's the other column to keep an eye on for Incarnate Word in the second half, and that is the foul column. They've got two players with three personal fouls. Dwight Murray and Jordan Caruso, and then three others with two personal fouls, Charles Brown, Augustine Nene, and Antoine Smith. The three guys with double-digit scoring efforts tonight also have two fouls. So it'll be interesting to see what the Huskies try to strategize to maybe further that foul trouble for Incarnate Word, shorten up that bench even a little bit more as we go through the second half of play. But right now we're at the break. It's a two-point game. Huskies have recaptured the lead by two. We had 10 lead changes, 10 ties in the first half. 
but it's 64-62 right now. We'll take a timeout when we come back. Take a look at the Southland Conference scoreboard. Let you know how it impacts the Huskies here tonight on the Husky Sports Network. Four points by Sheraton. Always a great stay. Everything you need. Plus, extras you love. All for a great rate. Over 150 hotels around the world. Travel the way you like. Check us out at fourpoints.com. At Raising Cane's, we believe in one love, quality chicken finger meals. But creating one love is no simple task. Everything has to be served hot and fresh, not just hot. We use only 100% premium chicken tenderloins, guaranteeing a 0% chance of leftovers. We insist on the best ingredients for our fries, like potatoes. And, well, we can keep talking quality, or you can just eat it. Raising Cane's. One love. Coming to you in Living Cola. Pepsi Cola from the wonderful folks who put the R in Cola. I didn't believe I could do it. The weight seemed too heavy. My competitors were too fast. I lacked motivation, and then I found the Hulk T-shirt. I transformed myself and believed that I could conquer the competition. Now everybody takes me serious because I demand them to. If I can do it, you can do it. Under Armour Alter Ego, transform yourself. Firehouse Subs was founded by two firefighters over 20 years ago. And once a firefighter, always a firefighter. So they've seen to it that a portion of your purchase at all U.S. Firehouse Subs locations now goes toward providing life-saving equipment for first responders. And one more thing, they make awesome subs. Now get any of our 10 specialty subs in a new small size, each under 500 calories. Big flavor, small subs, starting at $3.99. Firehouse Subs, founded by firemen. This is Ron Cottrell, and you're listening to Huskies Basketball on the DNA Husky Sports Network. And it's halftime of our game between the Huskies and the Incarnate Word Cardinals, 64-62, HBU with the lead. Going to take a look at the Southland Conference scoreboard, but first, good news from San Antonio tonight. The women's team under head coach Donna Finney comes away with a nice road win and spoil the party a little bit for Incarnate Word as the Lady Cardinals of Incarnate Word still we're looking at an outside chance of trying to work their way into a tournament berth, but Donna Finney's squad goes on the road to the McDermott Center tonight and knocks off UIW 67-52 and uh, breaks a, an eight-game losing streak in Southland Conference play with one more to go against a and Corpus Christi and Corpus on Saturday. Meanwhile, on the men's side, Huskies looking at Northwestern State versus Nichols. That game is at halftime, and Nichols with a 19-point lead, 48-29. Northwestern State just behind the Huskies by a game right now in the standings, and Huskies would need a Nichols win and some other help to try and clinch a berth tonight. The other help would be in the form of Sam Houston State winning against Central Arkansas, but Central Arkansas with about four and a half minutes to go in Huntsville as a two-point lead over the number one team in the conference. 80 to 78 is the score there. Huskies with the inbounds play and the clock didn't start as Braxton Bonds started dribbling to the middle and uh, clock operators didn't get things going. So 
They're going to reset it, and we're ready to go now with second half action. By the way, the Huskies' final opponent, who they are tied for sixth place with, Texas A&M Corpus Christi, has a lead late in the second half, 55-46. Huskies with the basketball to start the second half. Hart in the right corner to DeBose, and Ian travels with the basketball. Shuffled the feet before he put it on the floor. And it's a, only the third turnover of the ball game for HBU. Sixty-four, sixty-two. Huskies by two, but Incarnate Word brings it up the floor for the first time in the second half. Jordan Kite takes the feed from Murray. Back to Murray he goes. Osuji on him. Murray to the left angle. Back out top to Kite. Going to get a screen from Brown. Cut off at the elbow. Bounce pass down low to Peavy, and Peavy loses control, and it's taken away by Osuji. Suj off on the run, going to go to the baseline to Bonds, waits for the traffic to go by, and he's going to be fouled as he tried to go up. Kite got him from behind, and Bonds will go to the free throw line to shoot a pair here with 19-10 to go. Bonds with five points as he heads to the line and gets the first free throw to go here. Good-looking shot that time by Braxton. One of the four seniors honored tonight before the game on this, their final home game at Sharp Gym. Braxton's second free throw hits the front iron, though. Comes off. Huskies with the three-point lead. We roll down to 19 minutes to go. Ina feeds Brown back to the basket. He's picked up by Hart. Now he's going to dribble it. Tries to go by Hart and in through traffic, and he's going to be called for an offensive foul as Osuji got under there. Cut him off, and Brown picks up his third foul, and he becomes the third of eight eligible UIW players with three fouls here in the ball game. Three-point lead for the Huskies and a little housekeeping where Suge hit the deck. Matthew Martinez, one of our officials tonight, Martinez. Johnny Wilkins and Rod Dixon, veteran Southland crew, doing this game tonight. Dalton with the basketball for the Huskies. Takes it to the left baseline. Kick it back out on the wing to Bonds. Out top to DuBose. He tries a bounce pass inside to Hart. And Hart's going to be fouled by Brown, and that's going to be number four on Charles Brown. And he's going to check out with those four fouls. Antoine Smith will check in. Smith has two of his own. And DuBose takes the inbounds feed from Bonds on the baseline. Gets it to Osuji, back to Bonds, left corner. Lob it down inside to Hart. Bounces it into the paint and puts it up. It rims out, won't stay down. And Murray with the board for the Cardinals. Bring it up himself. Bonds stays with him. Man-to-man -man defense for the Huskies most of the night tonight, if not exclusively. Murray kicks it out on the wing to Kite. Kite to Smith. Smith to Ine. It's stolen away by Bonds. He's going to float it up. High off the window. Won't go. And Smith there for the loose ball. Takes it back the other way. Peavy into the corner. Murray for a three. Got it. Ties us up at 65. The Huskies have had some opportunities to get some separation here early in the second half, but have not. And we're all knotted up again. 11th tie of the ball game, and here's Hart with the feed from Dalton. Give Ty the assist. The bucket goes to Ed, and he's got 13 now, and the Huskies are back up by two. Murray drives it in left side, floats it up. Little rainbow. Got it to go down through. Knot it up one more time as we roll down towards 17 minutes to go. Bonds out at the arc. Going to feed it inside to Hart. Takes the feed and goes to the rack off the glass and down through for two. Ed using that rim as a screen and taking advantage of that. He's got 15 now. 69-67, Huskies by two. Smith in the left corner, going to put up a three over Dalton, and he got it to go. Ty was right there, had a hand up, 
But Antoine Smith just found the range. And it's 70 to 69, Huskies down by one. Bonds to DeBose, DeBose back to Bonds. He'll drive it in and float it up and over the iron and down through for two. The hot shooting continues for both these teams. 73% for the Cardinals. Huskies are up to 63%. Ine drives it in, cut off at the baseline, goes up over to both. And my goodness, they are just not missing tonight. 72-71, Osuji with the answer for three, and he got it. Huskies aren't missing a lot themselves. It's 74-72. We've got 16 minutes to go, and we're well on our way to both teams hitting 100. Here's a runner put up by Ine. This one rolls off the iron, and Osuji with the board. Forces it up in a hurry into the paint. Kick it out on the wing to Dalton. Feed it down low to Hart. Hart off the glass, and in for two. Two possession lead now, 76-72, and Ed has taken over the scoring lead, or tied anyway, with Jalen Gates, who's on the bench right now, each with 17 points. 15.25 to go. Peavy back to the basket, now faces up. Goes right side to Smith. He's going to fire away at a three. Off the mark this time, and Bonds with the board. Braxton forces the action up the floor. Now he's going to wait. Didn't have numbers. Get it to Hart down low, though. Wide open, and he can't finish it off. Rolled off the iron. Ed says, that one's on me. He's looking for a breather now as he's a little worn out. Peavy up the floor. He's going to get it to go. Off the window and in for two, and it's back to a two-point game, 76-74. Jackson Sten up off the bench. He'll check in when the clock stops, and we've got a whistle foul on the floor. It's going to be Antoine Smith. No, check it. It is going to be on Jordan Kite. Kite picks up his third, and uh, that'll stop the clock with 14.50 to go. Huskies by two, 76-74. They'll have the basketball inbounding it under their basket when we come back on the Husky Sports Network. At Memorial Hermann, we're many parts working in harmony performing more brain and spinal surgeries than anyone in Houston, conducting groundbreaking research at our Mischer Neuroscience Institute, establishing the region's largest network of certified stroke centers. Some might say this makes for an accomplished performance, but to us, it's all in a day's work. Memorial Hermann. Breakthroughs every day. Going to school at Houston Baptist University was an excellent choice. And as the official credit union of HBU, Houston Federal Credit Union is focused on helping you to continue to make great choices. HFCU will meet all your financial needs by providing the personal attention and variety of services you deserve. Stop by any of our convenient locations or visit our website, www.houstonfcu.org, and experience the credit union difference today. Dogs up. Two-point lead here for the Huskies as we come back to Sharp Gym. It'll be HBU basketball out of the timeout. 14.50 to go, 76-74 again. An update from San Antonio, Donna Finney's squad with a 15-point win on the road tonight. Snapping their eight-game losing streak in conference and spoiling the party just a little bit for the moment for UIW. Here's a three put up by Ty Dalton. Won't go and the rebound cleared by the Cardinals. Caruso's going to pop from the arc, and they're going to look at it. But Caruso, I think they called it a two for the moment. Now here's Osuji trying to answer with the three. Off the mark, the rebound tipped around, and it's loose on the floor, but Ine controls. Cardinals can bring it up, take the lead on this possession. Murray to Caruso, kick it to the middle. To Peavy. Peavy will drive down, loses control. It's out of bounds. They're going to say knocked out by Ty Dalton. And I don't think Ty ever actually touched the basketball. He's got a grin on his face, but it's not a smile of happiness. That's disbelief. 14.08 to go. 77-76. Huskies by a point, but UIW with the basketball. Peavy 
Gets it inbounds, way out top to Graham. Swing it around the arc into the corner to Murray. Murray picked up by DuBose, cut off at the baseline, stolen away with the bounce pass, intercepted by Osuji. Trying to find Peavy, and he found Osuji instead with the steal. Dalton swing it to DuBose, left wide open for a three, and he got it. Ian into double digits now. He's got a dozen, and the Huskies go up by two, 79-77. Tied about to check back in with three fouls. Cut off. Graham gets it back to Caruso. Left elbow. He'll go to Murray. Murray tries to penetrate but backs it out. Huskies on the perimeter trying to play tight defense. Ine, right angle. Down to six on the shot clock. Peavy's going to back in on Bonds. Down to three, two, and the ball is tipped and stolen away by Dalton. Good defensive effort that time on that set by the Huskies. Dalton will bring it back up, drives, float it off the window, won't go. Stint grabs a rebound, and he'll put it up and in. Jackson with his first points of the night. And the Huskies are up by four, say 81, 81 to 77, under 13 to go. Ine drives in. He's going to be bumped by Dalton as he tries to go by. That'll be the first personal on tie. It'll stop the clock with 12.48 to go, and we've got substitutions for both teams. Kite checks in for Murray for Incarnate Word. McKenzie and Gates check in for the Huskies. Phil and Jalen will replace Stephen Osuji and Ty Dalton. So DuBose, McKenzie, Bonds, Gates, and Stent, the five on the floor out there for Coach Cottrell right now. Graham with the dribble, right side, going to take it to the paint. He's cut off in the paint. Almost broke his ankles trying to put that jump step, that little stop in the paint. And they're going to say Gates got him with a reach. Jalen, that'll be number two, and it'll send Cody Graham to the free throw line for a pair of free throws here. Gets the first one to rattle out. Just a second team foul on the Huskies. Still a four-point game. Graham for the evening. Three points off the bench tonight. He's one of three at the free throw line. Now make it two of four as he gets the second one to go. He's got four. They're back to within three. 81-78. Bonds up the floor, angles left, leave it for DuBose. Back to the right side, goes to Gates. Jalen will drive down, put it up. He's going to be fouled. Shot comes up short, but Jay will get a couple of free throws here, and the foul is going to be on Cody Graham. Second foul on Graham. So now UIW has Brown with four, three on Smith, Caruso, and Murray, two on Ine. Graham and Kite. First free throw from Gates is good. Jay has been good at the line tonight. It's obvious he likes playing against the team from his hometown, Incarnate Word. Jay, seven free throws now make it eight. Eight for eight at the line tonight for Gates. And the Huskies up the lead to five. Equals their biggest lead of the night. Biggest lead for either team has been five. Here's Graham cut off to the baseline, feeds it to Caruso, and Caruso, a little spot-up jumper from 15 on the right baseline, gets it to go, cuts it back down to three. Here's Jay Gates for a three. Forced that one up a little bit, now we've got a whistle, and we're going to get a foul called on the rebound. Peavy pushed off on McKenzie with his left arm, but they're going to call the foul on Phil. For McKenzie, that'll be his first. Antoine Smith checks back in. Graham will check out. Caruso up the floor with the basketball. Take it into the paint, gonna float it up. The Huskies just kind of slacked off. They thought, I guess he was gonna pass the basketball. Left him with a wide open little floater from about eight feet away. It's a one-point game again, 83-82, 11.40 to go. Gates on the dribble, dish it out to Bonds for a three. Rattles out, wouldn't go. Had a pretty good look that time, wide open. 
No give Braxton that shot. The opponents will. Here's Peavy back the other way. He'll get the runner to go, and Coach Cottrell wants a timeout as there's not been much defense the last couple of trips up the floor. We've got a timeout, though. The Huskies will talk it over. We'll take a break. Trailing by one now, 84-83 on the Husky Sports Network. Four points by Sheraton. Always a great stay. Everything you need. Plus, extras you love. All for a great rate. Over 150 hotels around the world. Travel the way you like. Check us out at fourpoints.com. Every visit to Raising Cane's begins with a moment of truth. What to have? Six delicious, fresh, never, ever frozen premium chicken fingers? Four chicken fingers? Or perhaps three delectable chicken fingers? It's a tough one. Ah, we haven't even gotten to the whole coleslaw crinkle fry conundrum of deliciousness. Yeah, take your time, sister. We understand. Raising Cane's, one love. Eleven twenty-five to go as we come back to the sharp tank. Huskies trail by one, led by two at the half, 64-62. They've been outscored. 22 to 19 here since halftime. Carter Word comes into this game, 14 losses in a row. Last couple of games have been very close defeats. Lost to AM Corpus Christi over the weekend in overtime. Did they held the lead for much of that game? Here's Stent from the right side, takes the feed from Gates, turns around and puts it in. Jackson's got four. And Huskies are back up by a point, 85 84. Caruso into the paint, leave it for Peavy, almost lost control. He's going to save it, drive in, float it up. Won't go, but he's going to be fouled. And let's see who'll draw the number this time it's going to be on Philip McKenzie and that'll stop the clock with 10 52 to go brings us to another timeout on the floor another media timeout and so we'll catch our breath one more time take the break on the Husky Sports Network What's on your mind, kid? Make it fast. I'd like to work here at Jimmy John's World's Greatest Gourmet Sandwich Shop, sir. Why do you want to work at Jimmy John's, kid? I'm perfect for Jimmy John's. Doing what? Delivery. Delivery? Delivery. We deliver pretty fast here at Jimmy John's. That's what I heard. What'd you hear? You deliver pretty fast here at Jimmy John's. Then you heard right. I'm a fast study, sir. You know the Jim John slogan? The Jimmy John slogan. Jim John slogan is sub so fast you'll freak. Sub so fast you'll freak is a swell slogan, sir. When people call for a Jimmy John sandwich, they want it fast. Then I'm your man, sir. How so? Because I'm fast. Fast at what? Fast at everything. Can you deliver fast? I can deliver fast. How fast? I can run at 440 and 220. Minutes? No seconds. That's fast. You deliver before? I delivered newspapers before. Were you fast? Very fast. How fast? People got tomorrow's paper today. That's fast. So do I have the job? Not so fast. How do I know you're not just some fast talker? I can get your references. When? Now. These are good references. Thank you. But at Jimmy John's, you gotta be more than fast. More than fast. You gotta be polite. Fast and polite. Fast and polite. I can do fast and polite. Okay, give me some time to think it over. Okay. Okay, I've thought it over. When can you start? Now. Now it's good. What's your name, kid? Stefan Amalavadopoulos. Too long. How about Ed? That's fine. Welcome aboard, Ed. Jimmy John's Subs, an official sponsor of HBU Athletics. You're listening to the Husky Sports Network, powered by DNA Studios. Ten fifty-two to go here at Sharp Gym. Checking the conference scoreboard around the league tonight. Texas A&M Corpus Christi, a winner on the road in Lake Charles tonight, 59-50 there. So for the moment, they have inched ahead of the Huskies. Their record goes to 8-9 and nine in Southland Conference play. The Huskies will need a win here to keep pace with them and stay tied for that sixth spot. Peavy at the free throw line for the Cardinals. Gets the first one to go here. Ties us up at 85, and the second one is good as well. 
Also, Central Arkansas winner tonight in Huntsville over Sam Houston State, 91-87, the final there. So there will be no clinching of anything tonight for the Huskies as Central Arkansas keeps their hopes alive. Stent on the baseline, drives it in, put it up, get it to go, and he's fouled. I think that's going to be on Peavy. We'll see. No, it's going to be on Ine. Third foul on Ine, and number six as a team on Incarnate Word here. With 10.36 to go, Jackson Stent has a plus one at the line. Jax has been good off the bench tonight. Gets it to go. He's got, let's see, he's got seven points now. And it's 88-86. Huskies up by two. 10-28 and counting. Kite out top. Looks for an A. Get it to Peavy. Peavy. Kick it back out top to N.A. Dubose picks him up. Huskies again with the man-to-man defense. Back to PB. He's going to drive in and call for an offensive foul. PB picks up his second, seventh team foul. And so the Huskies are in the bonus the rest of the way with 10 minutes plus to go in the ball game. Jackson Stent took a shoulder to the chest. And he's catching his breath as he comes back up the floor, but he looks to be okay. Takes the feed down low with bounce pass, turnaround jumper, won't go. Underneath, and we've got a whistle as Caruso grabbed the, the loose ball, but he was on the baseline, out of bounds, and it'll be Huskies basketball. 9.53 to go, Ben Yoloko is gonna check in. Jackson's gonna get a breather. Probably still feeling a little bit of sting from that Charging foul on Peavy the last time up the other end of the floor. And so Yuloko will check back in. Here's Gates, drives it in. Goes strong to the rack. Won't get it to go, but he's fouled, and the foul is going to be on Kite. That is number four on Jordan Kite. Now we've got a little bit of a discrepancy here. That's either three or four for Kite. We'll check that number out. Graham is going to check in. First free throw from Gates is good. It's 89-86. We're just midway through the second half. And closing in on 100 points for both your opponents here tonight. Gates, the second free throw, rattles out, won't stay down. And Peavy with the rebound, going to bring it up coast to coast, puts it off the glass, and in for two over Yoloko. Draws him back to within one. Peavy's got a dozen. 89-88 is our score, nine and a half left in the game. DuBose to McKenzie, Phil, right side to Gates, out beyond the arc. Goes out top to Murphy. Murphy will drive down, kick it down low to McKenzie, and Phil gets the feed from Quan and jams it down through with two hands. Here's a tip and a steal by DuBose. Ian going to drive it in, into the corner to Murphy, open for a three from the baseline, got it! Quan for three, and the Huskies open up a six-point lead. 94-88. Largest lead of the ball game now for the Huskies, and we've got a timeout called for by Incarnate Word. Carson Cunningham wants to talk things over. He's unhappy with something that happened on the floor. Johnny Wilkins goes over. He will listen to him. It's a 30-second timeout. So we'll hang on to it right here with 8.54 to go. Jalen Gates, by the way, has 20 points now in the ball game. Ian DeBose is up to a dozen. Ed Hart has 17 points for the evening. Plenty of points to go around this evening. 
course, he's still got a long way to go to hit the season high. The Huskies put up 143 back in December on Dallas Christian. Final game before conference play started. Here's a whistle on the inbounds pass. We're going to get a bump by Quan Murphy. And for Murphy, that'll be his first, number five on the Huskies. 8.51 to go. Graham will get it inbounds to Caruso for the Cardinals. Caruso picked up by Gates, direct in traffic. He wants to clear out on the left side. Now he'll take it back to the middle. And Murphy jumps out to try and cut him off, bumps him with the body. That'll be the second foul in a hurry on Murphy. Six fouls now on the Huskies. Next one will put Incarnate Word in the bonus. Huskies are already there. 20 seconds on the shot clock, 8.41 to go, game clock. And Caruso lobs it in to Charles Brown. Brown playing with four fouls. He'll get it down low to Cody Graham, blocked by Uloco, but they're going to call him for the body. Ben will pick up his first personal. He's not happy. The student section down to our right not happy either. But Cody Graham will go to the free throw line. Shooting foul, so he'll have two free throws here, but that foul puts UIW in the bonus the rest of the way. Murray's going to check back in. Brown will sit down. 8.35 to go. Lead is down to five for the Huskies, 94-89. Graham's second free throw is good. It's a four-point game. DeBose to Gates, back to DeBose, and Ian will walk it up across the stripe. Leave it for McKenzie, who will go left to right across the top of the arc, into the right corner to Gates, and he's going to be bumped with a blocking foul on Caruso. Fourth foul now on Caruso, so again, not to flog this dead horse, but they've only got eight guys in uniform. And now three of them have four personal fouls. Check it. We're going to say two of them have four personal fouls. I think Kite only has three. They called it his fourth the last time up, but I think Kite just has three personal fouls. So they've got two guys with four fouls, four guys with three fouls. And their other two have two. <laughs> Free throws are good. Jay Gates now with 22 points, and the Huskies are back up by six. Caruso to the right side, check it left side, gives it off to Murray between the legs with the dribble, takes it down in, blocked by Quan Murphy, and Murphy comes away with the basketball. He'll bring it up himself, hand it off to DeBose. Ian stops, top of the arc, goes left side to McKenzie. Back to Ian, they play pitch and catch. Now lob it down low to Yuloko, drives in, reverses it up and under from the left side with the right hand. And Ben's got four, and the lead is eight now for the Huskies. 98-90, 7.40 to go. Graham almost lost it, saves it. Murphy and Gates both there, hit the, there to hit the deck. Can't come up with it, though. Good hustle by HBU. Ine drives in, left side, puts it up over McKenzie. Can't get it to go, and the rebound picked off by Phil. He'll get it the outlet to DeBose, off to Gates. A three, got it! And the Huskies are over the century mark with 7.17 to go. 101 to 90. A double digit lead for the first time tonight. Almost a steal by Murphy. Smith saves it down to Caruso. Goes up, blocked from behind by McKenzie. But we're going to get a foul. It's going to be called on McKenzie. And uh, <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Foul called on Philip McKenzie. Apparently, the ball is part of the hand. And you get called for a foul for touching the basketball. Timeout on the floor, 7.06 to go. Huskies by 11 on the Husky Sports Network. We're great at being human. And of all of mankind, we're made up of kind women and kind men. It would be wonderful if common knowledge was knowledge commonly known. And if the light from being enlightened into every heart was shown. 
It would be glorious if neighbors were neighborly and indifference a forgotten word. It would be awesome if we shared everything and being greedy was absurd. It would be spectacular if the golden rule was golden to every man and the good things that we ever did was everything that we can. Treating others like we'd like to be treated has always been our guiding principle. Marriott Houston West Chase, a proud partner of HBU Athletics. Seven oh six to go in regulation time. The Huskies have opened up their largest lead of the ball game, eleven points. As we come back. But I'll say this, you've got to hand it to the guys from San Antonio tonight, Incarnate Word. Listen to these numbers. They are 35 of 49 from the floor, 71% shooting on the night, 10 of 15 from the three-point line, 10 of 13 from the free throw line, where Jordan Caruso is right now. and making 11 of 14 as he gets the first one to go. And he's got one more free throw to come here to try and cut it back down to a single-digit deficit. Second free throw won't go, though. Misses one out of two that trip. Still good shooting by UIW tonight. The Huskies have a little bit more volume, and they've shot the ball very well as well. Gates, bounce pass down low to Yoloko, takes it in and uses the rim again as a screen and goes up over Peavy for the bucket. And the Huskies are back up by 12, 103-91 with 6.37 and counting to go in this game. Here's a whistle away from the basketball. And we're going to get a foul called on Ian DeBose. Ian doesn't think so. But it's going to send Christian Peavy to the free throw line. Nine fouls on each team now here in the second half. The first one in a one-on-one -on -one situation rattles out, won't go, and the rebound cleared by DeBose. And he'll bring it up. Ine picks him up across the timeline and almost came up with a steal. Saved by Murphy, and we're going to get a whistle and a foul going to be called on Jordan Caruso. And Caruso just fouled out. Caruso has five. It's number 10 on the Cardinals. And it's going to be Antoine Smith who checks in. No, check it. It's going to be Charles Brown who checks in. So I think he was going to come in for Augustine Ine, but instead we'll have to come in for Caruso, who's done for the night. Caruso, the valiant effort, 22 minutes. He has 13 points, five assists, three rebounds on the evening. Ian DeBose at the line, gets the first one to go. He's got 13 points now for the night. Jalen Gates still leading the way with 25 and Ian now with 14 as he gets the second free throw to go. It's 105-91. Huskies increase the lead to 14. Ian up the floor, picked up by Murphy. Bounce pass down low to Brown. Brown controls, float up a little hook, won't go, but Peavy with the jam on the putback. Drops it down through. It's 105-93. Peavy with 14 now. We've got four players in double figures on the score sheet. Check it now. Six players in double figures on the score sheet for the Cardinals. Six of their eight guys have double-digit scoring efforts tonight. Gates, right side to Quan Murphy. A long-range three. Hits the iron, but that's it. Graze is off and comes down to Ine. Up ahead to Brown. Brown's going to be hammered as he goes to the rack. Shot won't go, but he'll go to the free throw line. It could either be Murphy or Yuloko, and they're going to get Ben Yuloko for the foul. His second. Double bonus, though, now for both teams the rest of the way out. 5.35 to go. Brown will have two free throws here and gets the first one to go. 
Charles Brown has shown some nice touch tonight. He comes in as their third leading scorer on the season, averaging 10-6 a game, and he's over that. Gets both free throws to go. We told you they are an excellent free throw shooting team, number one in the nation in Division I basketball, 81% as a team, and they're up around that number again tonight. Actually, maybe just a little below at 13 of 18 at the three point or at the free throw line. Huskies with the basketball, feed it down low to Yoloko, turn around, got it off the window, and he's fouled. That's going to be on Brown, and Brown, I think, has just seen his night come to an end as he picks up foul number five and becomes the second Cardinal to foul out of this game. And now we'll see Antoine Smith check in for him. So it'll be Smith, Graham, Peavy, Murray, Inne on the floor for Carson Cunningham. And Jordan Kite on the bench is all that he has left. Still got five minutes to go and plenty of fouls to give. Ben Yuloko with a plus one at the line. Ben now off the bench has eight points and free throw is too strong. It'll stay right there. 107.95, Huskies by a dozen. Peavy going to drive in, puts it up, won't go, but he's fouled by Yuloko. That'll be number three on Ben, and it'll send Peavy back to the free throw line. By the way, during the last stoppage, Ty Dalton and Braxton Bonds checked in for the Huskies. Gates and McKenzie to the bench. Ed Hart is up. He will check in. Stephen Osuji will as well. Murphy and Yoloko will sit down. So now the starting five are back out there as Hart, Dalton, Bonds, and Osuji join Ian DeBose with 5.07 to go. PB's first free throw was good. The second one is as well. And it's back to a 10-point game, 107-97. Uh, Both teams are going to wind up over the century mark tonight. High-scoring affair, 64-62 at the half. DuBose, left side, swinging around the arc. Dalton, right angle, gets a screen from Hart. Now a bounce pass down low intended for Ed, but he was doubled up and stolen away. Graham on the run, going to give it to Peavy. He'll drive it in, rolls it off the iron, though, and Dalton clears the glass for the Huskies. Off to Bonds, and Bonds tried to feed it to DuBose. They were a little bit too close together. The spacing wasn't good on that, and the pass was a little bit awkward. It goes out of bounds off the Huskies. And turnover will give it back to the Cardinals for HBU now. That's just five turnovers in this game, 12 tonight committed by UIW. N.A. drives it in, rolls it off the iron. He wanted a whistle, no foul though. The rebound cleared by Murray though. Gets a new shot clock and he gives it out top to Graham. Graham will drive down, pull up at the baseline and float one up over Osuji and got it to go. It's down to an eight point lead for the Huskies. With four minutes and counting. 107-99. Bonds brings it up, picked up by Murray, right angle. Now he's going to take it to the baseline, float it up, won't go off the iron. But Braxton will, will draw the foul, and that will stop the clock with 3.52 to go. Brings us to our final media timeout of the night, and we will take the break. Huskies lead by 8, 107.99 on the Husky Sports Network. Dipley Donuts, we make our donuts from scratch every single day. Nothing trucked in frozen and we are texas born and raised since 1936 not like those other guys shipley donuts rolling up on a cheap price feels good but cheap comes with risk heart surgeons pilots no one hires a cheap one of them fact is certain things must be done right installing electricity in houston schools and hospitals needs to be built with manpower that spent 10,000 hours training to do their job so for heart surgeons to do their job we must do ours Skilled labor isn't cheap, and cheap labor isn't all that skilled. The time is now to hire IBW electricians. At Holiday Inn Express, we can't guarantee that you'll be able to contain yourself at our breakfast bar. Morning, egg white omelet. 
Sup, Lady Bacon. Fruit? There it is. But we can guarantee that you'll get the best price when you book with us. Holiday Inn Express. Be the readiest. Hi, I'm Ron Cottrell. Thanks for listening to HBU Basketball on the DNA Husky Sports Network. Three fifty-two to go in our game tonight. The Huskies have an eight-point lead, one hundred and seven to ninety-nine. And Braxton Bonds at the free throw line as we come out of the timeout. During the break, we were thinking back to the Lamar game. This one, in a couple of ways, a little reminiscent of that game, with regard to the way the opponent has shot the ball tonight. We kept thinking in that Lamar game over in Beaumont a couple of games back that the Cardinals of Lamar would eventually cool down. They never did. Shot over 60% for the night. And even though they're down by nine now, Carnot Word still at 68% shooting for the night. They have not cooled off at all. Bonds gets both free throws to go. It's 109.99. Braxton with 10 in a almost picked from behind by DuBose. And he tried to save it, but hits the sideline. Good hustle by Ian. Just couldn't keep it inbounds. Graham was there to pick it up for the Cardinals anyway. I think they would have kept possession no matter what. But they'll inbound it. Get it out top to Peavy. Peavy will go to Antoine Smith. Smith looks inside. Finds Peavy instead. Right elbow. Face up over Ed Hart. Pulls up with a little 15-footer. And got it to go. And they're into the triple digits. 101. Huskies have 109. Peavy with 18 points now. Hart out top. Feeds it left side to Dalton. Rolling down toward the three-minute mark. Osuji swing it to Bonds. Into the corner to DeBose. Dribbles out at the arc. Kick it down low. No look pass to Braxton Bonds. And he lays it off the window for two. Good feed. Good cut without the basketball by Braxton. Give Ian the dime and Braxton the bucket, and here's a whistle on the drive by Peavy. Peavy's just trying to take over this game for Incarnate Word, and he's keeping them close, and he'll go back to the free throw line here. Ed Hart trying to get an explanation. He was called for the foul. Matthew Martinez is saying he kind of leaned that body in to Peavy as he went by. Peavy gets the first free throw here. Jackson Stent is about to check back in. Second free throw from Peavy is good. Ed will check out with 2.54 to go, and Stent will check back in. Ed's had a good night tonight here on senior night, his final home game. Back to all the seniors have had good nights for the Huskies. Bonds, Osuji, and Hart. Osuji well, drives in. He'll float it up and right on cue. Suji gets the bucket to go. He's got 11 now. And the Huskies are back up by 10, 113-103. Here's Murray. Drives in. Stops on a dime. Spins around and floats it up from the right side and gets it to go. Point blank range. A little floater. And Murray now has 14. Check it, 16. With 2.11 to go, here's a cutter. Bonds takes the feed from Ian DeBose and gets it to go. Another assist for Ian, another bucket for Bonds. It's back up to 10. Here's Peavy in the paint. He's going to be cut off by Osuji. But they're going to call Ty Dalton for reaching in and getting him on the arm. Ty... Had nine points early tonight. He's still right there. They haven't needed a lot of scoring from him. As they've been getting it from other areas this evening. Jalen Gates, especially off the bench with 25 tonight. Braxton Bonds with 14. Ian DeBose with 14. Ed Hart with 17. And then 11 from Steven Osuji. Free throw is good. One out of two. For Murray, here's Bonds the other way. Going to go up strong. Won't go, but he's going to be fouled. Let's see who draws it. It's going to be on Antoine Smith. Foul. 
That'll be his third foul. <laughs> Check it, that'll be the fourth on Antoine Smith. 151 to go. Braxton gets the first free throw to go. He's had a good time at the line tonight. This one rattles out. Sorry, Brax. My fault. And up the floor, Peavy is going to draw the whistle against Ian DeBose. DeBose was running stride for stride with him, and Peavy kind of slowed up and leaned into Ian, and they call Ian for the contact. Third foul on DeBose with 148 to go. They'll send PV back to the free throw line. He gets the first free throw to go here. 116, 108. Huskies by eight. Trying to hang on to go to eight and nine tonight. Stay even with Texas A&M Corpus Christi in the conference race. They'd be tied for sixth. PV's second free throw is good. It's a seven point advantage for HBU. Pressure in the backcourt now by the Cardinals. The Huskies will break it. As Bonds lobs it up ahead to DeBose. Take it to the arc. Kick it to Osuji, and they'll get it back out top. Content to eat up a little clock now. Bonds with the yo-yo out, right angle, way out top. Gets a screen from Stent. Now gives it to Jackson. He'll fire away at a three off the mark, and the rebound tipped and controlled by Osuji, a new shot clock. Osuji will save it to Bonds, and they can eat off some more. Get it down to under a minute to go with a seven-point lead. Dalton picked up by Peavy. Drives in, but backs it out. Hand it off to Bonds. And the ball is going to be knocked out of bounds. They're going to say it went out off the knee of Braxton. And it'll be Cardinal basketball with 107 to go. Three possession game, but still not in the clear yet for the Huskies. As the Cardinals will bring it up. Time becoming precious, though. As Murray brings it up. Picked up by Bonds, who'll go to the baseline. Cut off, goes back out to Peavy on the angle, drives it in by Stent, put it up and gets it to go. And it's down to five, 116, 111, a two possession game. Don't want to get sloppy here if you're the Huskies. And Dalton will bring it up into the front court. He's going to be double teamed as they try to go to the trap in the forecourt, hand it off to Osuti. He'll be tripped up as he went underneath the basket. He's going for the dish to Bonds. Bonds had an easy layup, but the whistle came before the shot. A tripping foul. Murray with the foul, and that's going to be number five on Murray. So he will foul out, and Jordan Kite, last option off the bench for Incarnate Word tonight. As Murray Caruso... And Brown have all fouled out of this one. And the final five tonight for Carson Cunningham will be Kite, Peavy, Smith, Inna, and Graham. Osuji missed the first free throw, gets the second one to go, takes it back out to a six-point advantage with 35.3 on the game clock. And a timeout called by the Huskies. 117-111. Again, uh, update from around the conference. First, looking at the women's side, Donna Finney squad headed back to Houston tonight with a win under their belts on the road. Congratulations to the Husky women as they knock off Incarnate Word for their third conference win of the year. Sophie Taylor led the way with 17 points. Megan Valdez Crater added 16, Amanda Johnson with 12, and the Huskies come away with a 67 52 win. They had a 33 23 lead at the halftime break, opened it up to 19 points at the end of the third quarter, and then kind of cruised to the 15 point victory. Then on the men's side, well, we'll get to the men's scoreboard next opportunity we get with Huskies lead here by six. Graham up the floor, drives underneath the basket, basket, kicks it out on the baseline, left side to Smith. His three won't go. And we're down to under 30 seconds left. And DuBose will get it up ahead to Dalton. Dalton dribbles around, is going to try and hold it up, but he has it tipped away, almost stolen. And now Dalton is on the floor, and we've got a whistle and 
let's see. Got a foul called on Christian Peavy. That'll be his third. Good hustle by Dalton after he had the ball initially tipped away. With 7.9 seconds to go, he'll go to the line and can kind of ice this one for the Huskies at the stripe. And the first free throw won't go. Ty's got still an opportunity with a free throw here to get into double digits. He would become the fifth Husky into double digits, and he gets there with the free throw, 118 to 111. Ty has 10. Up the floor in a hurry. N.A. puts up a jumper, won't go in the rebound. Picked off by Dalton, and that'll do it. The Huskies will hang on, come away with a seven-point win on senior night to wind up the home portion of their schedule this year. 118-111 is our final score. HBU will move to 8-9 and nine in conference play. They will join Texas A&M Corpus Christi with that record. Tied for sixth in the conference standings. And the Huskies and the Islanders will match up at the American Bank Center on Saturday afternoon to determine who will go in as the number six seed and who will go in as the number seven seed. 118-111. Our final tonight, we'll take a timeout and come back with the Huskies postgame report on the Husky Sports Network. Are you a graduate of Houston Baptist University? Did you know the value of your degree increases when you actively participate in the HBU Alumni Association? Your Alumni Association actively supports the growth, retention, and ranking of our school by our scholarship efforts. Husky Alumni Network volunteers actively work to recruit the best and brightest to HBU, and we promote and support programs intended to build a growing network of people committed to quality, higher Christian education through our alumni scholarship efforts. We also work to strengthen the bond between our university and the community, and we're your connection to over 18,000 fellow alumni, mostly in and around the Houston metro area. Log on to learn more about our mission and your privileges and benefits at hbu.edu slash alumni. And find us via social media on Facebook at the Houston Baptist University Alumni Association page and on Twitter and Instagram at hbu underscore alumni. But no matter how you do it, connect with the HBU Alumni Association because a strong alumni base equals a strong HBU. The real story is I'm in here every morning and uh, have sampled just about every kolache that they make here. Bacon, egg, and cheese on wheat for me, and then the rest is for the office. So, yes, I'll pick up every Friday. I'll stop by here and pick up some for my group. So. Well, I used to think it was just fruit-filled stuff, and then I came here, and there's eggs and bacon and cheese and all kinds of good stuff in there. It's like a whole breakfast and a bun. It's great. <laughs> it's always a good thing if you can eat healthy and not know it. <laughs> drive down the street looking for something to eat, you're going to pass five places to buy a sandwich, six places to buy a burger. There's only one place you can get a kolache, and that's Kolache Factory. It's delicious. You're going to have people that try to copy you, but they're not going to do it as well. We know what we're doing. We've been doing it for 25 years. We do it the best, and our success proves that. Houston's own Kolache Factory, the freshest, highest quality, best tasting kolaches in town. Over 50 Houston area locations and a proud partner of HBU Athletics. Pepsi's always had great taste. Today, try great taste with zero sugar. This is the Pepsi with zero compromises. This is Pepsi Zero Sugar. This is the Pepsi that gets you stuff. Like tickets to... What's up, everybody? I'm Dirk Spen. Who doesn't love Pepsi stuff? Drink Pepsi, get stuff. Run with UA Map My Run. With your UA Connected footwear, you can leave your phone behind. However, if you choose to run with it, the UA Map My Run app will give map views of your route and a deeper look at your workout with additional stats. We are under armor. The future is ours. Under Armour. 
We're passionate, delivering expert neurological care for adults and children. We're dedicated, responding to neurotrauma and stroke with LifeLight in our Level 1 Trauma Center. We're persistent, restoring lives at our Tier Rehabilitation and Research Hospital. We are Memorial Hermann. And we're making neuroscience breakthroughs every day. Four Points by Sheraton. Always a great stay. Everything you need. Plus, extras you love. All for a great rate. Over 150 hotels around the world. Travel the way you like. Check us out at fourpoints.com. You're listening to the Husky Sports Network, powered by DNA Studios. And welcome back in to the Sharp Tank on the campus of HBU. Lonnie King welcoming you in to the Huskies postgame report. A happy place to be tonight as the Huskies come away with a 118-111 win over the Incarnate Word Cardinals. A shootout tonight. Both teams plus 60% from the floor tonight, plus 50% from uh, the uh, three-point line and, by the way, plus 75% from the free-throw line as well. We'll talk about specific numbers here in just a moment, but the Huskies a uh, winner tonight and uh, the final score again, 118 to 111 as they hang on here to go 8-9 and nine in Southland Conference play. As we told you uh, just before we cut away at the end of regulation there, they remain tied for the sixth seed right now with AM Corpus Christi, who in fact will be their opponent on Saturday afternoon in the final game of the regular season down in Corpus Christi at the American Bank Center. Both teams are eight and nine. And uh, we said that's uh, the winner will be the sixth seed, the loser will be the seventh. That's actually not completely accurate. The winner of that game indeed will be the number six seed, but. Uh, the uh, loser of that game has a couple of possible scenarios that might drop them down below the seventh seed, depending on the outcome of a couple of other games. But right now, those two teams tied at eight and nine, and the Huskies will go in looking to uh, win on the road to close out the season, finish up at 500 in conference play, which would be a nice little feat considering the way this conference season started after they won their first conference game back on January the 2nd against Lamar. The Huskies then lost six in a row, and almost midway through the league season, they were looking up at everybody else from the bottom of the standings at one and six. Since that point now, with the win tonight, they are seven of their last ten with uh, wins are in the win column. And they have moved to eight and nine and can, with a win on Saturday, finish up at the 500 mark and clinching the number six seed in the tournament. We'll look at the standings a little closer in just a minute as time permits, but let's take a look at the final stat sheet tonight. Huskies <coughs> are actually outshot tonight by Incarnate Word. 40 of 59 from the floor for the Cardinals, 68%. Huskies shoot a paltry 63%, 39 of 62 from the floor. Incarnate Word shot better from the three-point line as well, 10 of 17 for 59%. The Huskies were 10 of 20 for just 50%. HBU did get to the free throw line, though, 40 times tonight, made 30 of their 40 free throws, 75% from the line. And Incarnate Word, we told you, the leading free throw shooting team in Division I basketball, uh, wind up just under 81% for the evening, 21 of 26 at the line tonight. So just like the Lamar game when we kept saying the opponent has to cool off, but they never did. Carnet Word did not either, but somehow the Huskies overcome that and come away with a seven-point win anyway, 118 to 111. Individual numbers look like this for the Huskies. They wind up with six guys in double digits tonight. 25 points from Jalen Gates off the bench to lead the way. 
Uh, he was followed by Edward Hart, the senior, finishes with 17 points. He also had four rebounds in the contest. Braxton Bonds finishes the night with 15 points, four boards, four assists as well for Brax. Another senior finishes with a good night. And then sophomore Ian DeBose finishes with 14 points, nine assists, and seven rebounds. Nice evening for Ian, especially not only on the scoreboard, but also distributing to his teammates to help them get to the rack and get some buckets tonight. So 14 for Ian, then 12 for Stephen Osuji, the third senior in the mix tonight for the Huskies. Finishes up with a dozen points. And 10 for Ty Dalton. Finished up with that late free throw to get him into double digits. Everybody that played for the Huskies tonight wound up on the scoreboard. Eight points off the bench for Ben Yoloko. Jackson Stent, good effort tonight. In 12 minutes, he got seven points, two boards. And a steal as well. Six points for Quan Murphy. Uh, two apiece for Oliver Lynch Daniels and Philip McKenzie to round out the scoring for the Huskies. So 118-111, we'll take a timeout. When we come back, we'll be joined by the head coach of the Huskies, Ron Cottrell, on the Huskies postgame report. Houston Federal Credit Union and Houston Baptist University have joined forces to put the howl back in your finances. HFCU offers several products and services such as auto loans, mortgages, and credit cards. And HFCU has a financial education program, Elevate, which is tailored to helping you increase your financial knowledge. Stop by any of our convenient locations or visit our website, www.houstonfcu.org, and experience the credit union difference today. Dogs up. I'm Robin. And I'm Chris. We're the brothers behind Firehouse Subs. Back when we were firemen, when it came to food, we said it better be something good and, and a lot, lot of, of it. it. That's what you get at Firehouse Subs. Take our hook and ladder sub. Smoked turkey breast, Virginia honey ham, and Monterey Jack cheese, all steam heated and piled high on a toasted sub roll. Our way beats their way. If you don't agree, it's free. You're going to cover that, right? My money's on the sub. Love the confidence. <laughs> Firehouse Sub, founded by firemen. International Brotherhood of Electric Workers, Local 716 in Houston, get up for work each day because we believe building schools to code matters. Because building Houston's hospitals correctly saves lives. Because training for 10,000 hours makes a difference. That's why we get up, because we want to make a difference. To be the best, hire the best. IBEW, where skill and value lock arms. The time is now to hire IBEW electricians. This is Ron Cottrell, and you're listening to Huskies Basketball on the DNA Husky Sports Network. And welcome back in to the Huskies postgame report. 118 to 111, the final tonight. Huskies winners in the final home game, senior night here at Sharp Gym. And we're joined by the head coach, Ron Cottrell. And coach, something about the Huskies brings out the best in the shooting for uh, UIW, man. They just shot lights out both games against us this season. Yeah, we, we, for whatever reason, have some really bad matchups, and we can't, we, we can't seem to slow them down. And, and it's just a, you know, tough matchups all over the floor, starting with the post, uh, being able to shoot out on the floor. But, you know, obviously, we have the advantage inside in that matchup. But it, they just kept driving us, driving us, driving us, and, and we couldn't get them stopped over and over again. And, and um, you know, it, thankfully, we got a few stops late that, that kind of gave us a little bit of a cushion, but uh, I never felt comfortable all the way down to <laughs> seven seconds to go in the game. And that in spite of the fact that they were short on the bench tonight Absolutely. and uh, you got them into foul trouble and they were down to five at the end of the game. But yeah. And you got to give them credit for for a game effort tonight. Yeah, I told them that you know I was I, I thought they should be very pleased with the with the way they played. Their kids fought all the way through, and and we just didn't do a good job defensively. But that's a lot of them and and a, and, and a lot of us as well. We just didn't come out with the focus we needed to be able to, to get stops. And and uh, you know it was just one of those games. It was back and forth, and and uh, just you know. <laughs> you, you had to you had to score because you knew that at the other end we weren't getting any stops. 
And then on the other side of that coin, uh, something about UIW seems to bring out the best in Jalen Gates. He had another yeah. big game for you tonight yeah, off the bench. Certainly this year he, he, he did a great job. And what was really good was he kept attacking them like he did there, and that got him got him to the free throw line quite a bit. And and so it, not only was he hitting his three, but he was doing other things to to be able to get to the, to the free throw line and get points on the board for us. I mean, you look up and down the lineup, we had one, two, three, four, five, six guys, uh -huh. six guys in double digits. Uh, and they, had, they had six as well, I guess. Uh, I mean, it, you know, it was just one of those games. Yeah. Well, you, you defend the home court, though. You, you go to eight and nine in conference. You're, you're still right there in the mix. Big game now coming up on Saturday yeah. against A&M Corpus Christi. And uh, it's looking more and more like that's going to be a game for who wears the white uniforms in the tournament? Who wears uh, the road right jersey? Now we're trying to get in it. And, yeah. and well, looks, I know, it but it looks like we may not. I mean, we may have to win on Saturday. Yeah. From what we're hearing, so I, I, it's it's an elimination game as far as we're concerned right now. We got to go there with the mindset we got to win a ball game. Well, to that regard, uh, knowing what happened the first time around against A&M Corpus Christi, and knowing that they're going to likely have a little bit of revenge on their mind and want to defend their home floor. What kind of challenge do you expect to see on Saturday? Well, I, I haven't spent a whole lot of time watching them lately, uh, but you know that on their home court, they're hard to beat. They're going to defend like crazy. They're a really, really good rebounding team. Uh, and you've got certain guys, Kareem South, you've got to keep under control. Uh, the big boy inside, you got to keep him under control. It's it's just going to be a tough matchup on their home court. we got to go down there playing the best we can. But another game where you, you kind of look at different styles of offense where uh, they'll play at a little – they want to, I'm sure, play at a little slower pace yeah. than you will. So yeah, absolutely. If, I guess tempo will be critical to you in yeah, that game. I mean, that's, that's big for us. We want to get out and score and, and 